Morris, I told you I just watched it today and man, it comes out and grabs you from the word go and doesn't let go for the next couple of hours. Um, what does it feel like to be on the, the eve of this movie coming out that you've poured so much into? I, I'm excited. You know, honestly, uh, you know, uh, we finished shooting this movie right before the pandemic hit. So to go through post and edit, and, you know, and really, you know, put this movie together um, and not really sure where exactly, you know, when it was going to come out. So now that things are loosening back up and, uh, you know, getting ready to, you know, drop it on, you know, on Amazon Prime, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really, really, really excited about this one. Man. So let's give people a little bit of the backstory without giving too much away about who John Kelly yeah. is. It's based off the Tom Clancy book, which right away people lean in and they want to see it. But this is sort of the origin character, origin story of a character they may not know as well. Yeah, John Kelly. So this is like, you know, arguably, you know, his you know, second, probably most famous character that 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 he's um you know created you know in his novels um and i've always been a fan of the tom clancy universe you know growing up playing rainbow six video games and really you know envisioning myself throughout these missions so when i had an opportunity to really like give uh you know john kelly a, a you know a fresh take and modernize the story you know that that kind of is more reflective of the world that that i live in today you know i just jumped at the opportunity um he kind of you know he goes through a personal tragedy you know, he's a you know, Navy SEAL, you know, he's a, a really loyal guy, you know, he believes in um, everything that he does. Um, and, and when he uh, gets wronged, you know, he, he wants some answers, you know, and, and this movie kind of takes place uh, of, of John looking for those answers, uh, no matter where they are. The video game part of this is crazy to me because you literally are living out the fantasy of every kid. You grow up playing a video game and now you get to go live it out. Exactly. And, that, and that's one of the things, you know, I, I mean, I love my job, man. And I love being able to, um, you know, to, to, you know, do my own stunts. You know, I mean, as a kid in the living room, when you're taking the couch cushions and, you know, you're, you know, you're jumping off of them and, you know, pretending, you know, playing make believe of whatever it is. Uh, these are the type of movies that I watched growing up. And so I finally be able to get into a place where I could do my own stunts and I could train for, um, you know, underwater sequences and, you know, and burning cars and, you know, tactical training and explosions and all that good stuff. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's a dream come true. You've called this the ideal movie for you, that when you saw this, you were like, I need to do this. Why do you say that exactly? Uh, because I'm, I'm a little bit of an adrenaline junkie. You know, <laughs> I, I, you know, looking up to, you know, you know, movie stars and action, action heroes like, you know, Tom Cruise and, um, Michael Jai White, you know, Wesley Snipes, Jackie Chan, you know, these guys, they always put the work into it, you know, they, they study, they train, um, so they could, you know, be put in a position to actually do the stunts themselves. And I always wanted to do that, you know, I always wanted a, a vehicle or a movie that would allow me to actually do my own stuff. So, you know, for this one, I had a great stunt team, you know, we were very safe, uh, put a lot of time into uh, working out and training and getting prepared so they felt comfortable enough putting me in those positions. When you say you're doing your own stunts and you do in this movie, when I watch you walk up to a burning car, casually open the door and get in, <laughs> or plunge into a river, let's say, and hold your breath underwater for a while, that's you? That's Michael B. Jordan? Yeah, that's me, man. That's, uh, <laughs> you know, obviously, you know, I have a, like my stunt double, Clay, you know, it goes through things, makes sure everything's safe, you know, works out all the kinks, makes sure, you know, everything is, is awesome uh, and safe as, safe as can be. But no, man, like, you know, doing military, you know, you know, diving, you know, and, and, you know, going to dive tanks and, you know, spending hours and hours and hours under there becoming comfortable. Um, uh, the burning car is like, it's not too much you could really do to train for that. You know, I, I think that's the one I, I thought about the least. I was like, all right, cool. I gotta do what? Okay, cool. Let's do it. Don't think about it. You know, the, you know, you put some, you know, flame retardant gel on you to make sure, you know, you can stay as cool as possible for as long as possible, but you still might walk away with a few less eyebrows and eyelashes. <laughs> and, uh, it, it gets pretty hot getting in and out of the car. Is there anybody in your life or on set saying, hey, you're one of the biggest movie stars in the world. We don't need you walking into a burning car right now. I mean, I, I all the producers, I think everybody was, was saying that, you know, <laughs> had my mom on speed dial, you know, so I think it was one of those things where uh, I, I definitely had to persuade them at certain moments to, to, to let me do the things that they were like, ah, you don't have to. I'm like, no, 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 I want to, let's do it. Let's, let's, let's figure it out. So uh, yeah, it was fun.
but. You've said before that your mom gets tired of watching you die in movies over the course of your career, so she didn't want to see it in this one. Yeah, this one gave her a lot of anxiety, but um, but but it, it wasn't as nerve wracking, I'm sure, as some of the other characters that I played that uh, didn't make it out, you know. So so you know, as you get older, you know, you start to, you know, mature and have other roles that that you want to see them, you know, make it to the you know to the end of the credits, you know. So it's uh, it's it, it was good. Speaking of the end of the credits, there's a moment after the credits. That leads me to believe this may be the beginning of something for you. Is that fair to say in this series? Yeah, yeah that's fair to say. I mean, I think we want to, you know, definitely stick around after the uh, after the credits. Um, but yeah, I think we're, you know, you know, we're alluding to the fact that we think we created a world that was, you know, interesting and cool and fun, and uh, we want to see where you know John Clark goes from here. You know, and uh, I don't think he's done yet. You know, hmm. so. Yeah, he has a lot more to do, and I'm really interested to see where he goes. Is it cool for you, Michael, to have reached the point in your career where you can live out some of these fantasies, to have grown up watching Matt Damon be Jason Bourne or Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible or all the stars you mentioned, and now there you are standing as the guy that some kid watching movies growing up is going to say, I want to be Michael B. Jordan in those movies? No, that's cool, man. That's, uh, that's you know... Yeah, I mean, I think it's safe to say that's something that, you know, I, 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 you know I'm hopeful of, you know, and I want to continue to do movies like this. Um, you know, continue to continue to inspire, you know, I think representation is extremely important, you know, so to be able to, you know, do a, a wide, uh, you know, range of movies in different genres. And this is like my first one in this space. So to be able to, um, to be able to, you know, to do this type of movie is, 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 is exciting for me and it hopefully inspires uh, a lot of kids too. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. All right, it is love that. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Yeah, people may not realize that you're a producer of the movie Outlier Society, your production company, which has become this sort of force in Hollywood. Talk a little, if you can, Michael, about why you established that, what you wanted to accomplish with that, and how it's grown now to back these major projects like Remorse. You know, yeah, I think in the beginning, um, you know, starting my own production company kind of sparked from uh, my time on Friday Night Lights and Parenthood, you know, being around, you know, Peter Berg, you know, Sarah Aubrey, you know, and uh, Jason Kadem, and, and kind of, you know, Pete, Pete was like, you know, one day you're gonna get tired of like uh, waiting for the phone to call. You know, you just gotta you gotta start owning things and creating your own IP and and uh, ownership, ownership, ownership. And I was like, you know, and at that at young age, I just started, you know, thinking about creating things. You know, creating opportunities for others. You know, I've been extremely blessed to have a you know a fruitful career thus far, and I wanna, um, you know, you gotta pay that forward. You know, um, so to be able to like create, have a production company, who. Um, you know, can shine a light on stories that maybe normally wouldn't wouldn't get told. You know, and also, uh, you know, normalize. You know, um, you know, films and 
filmmakers and building around talent that um, that maybe wouldn't have gotten a shot or opportunity. You know, I want to be the the tip of tip of the spear in that type of way and and not create those opportunities for them. And you put riders in the deals where you have to have a certain level of inclusivity in terms of who works on the movie, which is an amazing piece of leverage that a handful of stars, I would think, could bring to a, a project. Yeah, the inclusion writer, you know, was inspired by Francis, Francis McDormand, you know, um, a few years ago during her famous, uh, you know, Ox, o Oscar speech. And I was, you know, in the audience and I heard, and I was like, oh man, okay. There's something, you know, in writing that, that we can actually, you know, put into play. I was like, okay, cool. So, and that was something that, you know, we, we you know, my team started to build upon and, um, and we made that, you know, part of our, you know, our company policy. And that's something that, you know, just kind of, you know, tries to, you know, raise the accountability, you know, of, um, of our partners with Outlier Society. And, um, and, and, it's, and it's been very successful. It's been adopted uh, on every project thus far uh, since, since we put that in place. And uh, we'll continue to do so moving forward. So it's, uh, um, yeah, it's definitely something I'm proud of. And, you know, we're taking steps in the right direction. A long way to go, a lot of work to do, but but I think if we continue to lead by example, um, and you know, one step, one foot in front of the other, you know, when it's all said and done, we'll look up and be like, okay, you know, we did something. Good for you for using your position for for good that way. It's it's funny to hear you talk about the people you looked up to growing up, and I'm thinking back to your youth, your childhood in Newark, New Jersey, and how you got from where you were in Newark to modeling and acting. What was, the, what was the leap for you? How did that young kid at 11 years old hop into modeling and eventually that was sort of the road to show business? Uh, it was my mom, you know? My mom really uh, got me into it. She, uh, you know, randomly, uh, you know, at a doctor's appointment, the receptionist had two little boys who were, you know, you know were in the industry, you know, uh, that were, were models at the time. And was like, you know, you should bring your, you know, your sons with you too, you know, with, with me and, you know, crash this audition. I crashed this audition and ended up booking it. Got in trouble because I didn't have any <laughs> representation or whatever the case is. And then, uh, and and honestly, you know, the rest was history. You know, um, had a backstage newspaper down at Penn Station, randomly looked up a manager that had took out an ad, you know, for open calls, went in, auditioned. She signed me that day and we were going out on, uh, you know, go sees and auditions and stuff at you know, 10, 11, 12. And then it just one, you know, one small success to another, one step, you know, one stepping stone to, to another one. I just kind of just kept going. Sometimes you just got to like walk your path. You know, you don't really know where it's going to end up. And then you start to learn and you get to another level and you, you assess and you learn and you build and your confidence and you continue to grow and you just figure it out. And it's just kind of always been like following my gut and my intuition, but I, you know, I credit my mom for sure uh, of getting me started and pushing me where I am. Was that even on your radar though, Michael, as a kid? I know you love sports, you're a good athlete. Was that something that you thought of like, oh, maybe someday I'll try actor? Or was it just that out of the blue? Out of the blue, no, it was no, it was no thought at all. Honestly, I was uh, enjoying, you know, sports and and just hanging out with my friends and you know, just living. You know, you're a kid at that point. You, know, I mean, I guess some some kids know exactly what they want to do at a young age, but I always loved, you know, um, you know, animation and movies and television shows. You know, I was always enter entertained by that. So um, it was, just, I guess, it's a natural evolution. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Today Show's newest fan. Little Al Roker.
We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it, I know that it can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at five on NBC News Now. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Most people point to your performance on The Wire as sort of the breakthrough, playing Wallace. How big of that? How big a deal was that in your life, in your career? Did that give you the taste of, okay, I think I can do this for a living? Yeah, that was, uh, that was when I really fell in love with acting. That's when I was around, you know, um, a lot of veteran actors that, you know, like, you know, Idris Elba, you know, Dominic West, uh, J.D. Williams, Andre Royo, like those guys really um, sat me down and had conversations with me on set and it was like, hey, you can, you can, this could be a career for you, you know, if you continue to, you know, if you if you if you're serious about it and you, you really you really keep uh, working at it, and uh, that was when I first started to like, you know, really look at it differently than just oh, I'm getting out of school and I could, you know, and I'm and I'm uh, you know, you know, or like or just you know, yeah, I just looked at it more as a business that type of way, and then from then, uh, falling in love with acting, you know. Um, was my thing. And then a crazy connection on All My Children where you actually replaced Chadwick Boseman, who had become one of your great friends. What was that experience like on All My Children? Yeah, I mean, that's where the work ethic kicked in. You know, we would do so many episodes a week, you know, and um, just like, we would just like, you know, we would crank them out. It, it was a lot, uh, you know, you just always had to be prepared. So I think that's where I really got my acting school. You know, I think that was when I really kind of started to uh, uh, get my reps in. You know, I guess as an actor, and in, you know, in hindsight, you know, I was you know with Chadwick of it all when we first kind of you know uh, first first met. Uh, uh, yeah, that's that's uh, it's wild. It's wild. Yeah. yeah, I mean, when you think about what came for you guys later with one of the biggest movies in the history of Hollywood and Black Panther, to build that relationship coming off of All My Children, it's got to be crazy. What did he mean to you as a friend? No, I mean, you know, he's a he's a special person. You know? And it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a tragic loss, you know, for all of us, you know, for me, um, you know, uh, our community, you know, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, we're still dealing with it, you know, I think we're still processing, you know, I think it comes in waves, but, you know, his legacy that he left behind, the, um, the impact that he's made on so many, you know, people around the world, you know, his family, um, he lives forever, you know, um, you know, he has an incredible body of work to be able to, you know, that we can reminisce and, you know, and get a chance to, uh, you know, see pieces of him. But, but, he, but he's uh, he's still with us. You know what I mean? His his uh, he's he's still around. So you, he motivates and inspires me. So it's it's cool. Were you guys? I interviewed Chadwick right in the middle of Black Panther mania. I think you guys had just come back from South Korea or something. And he just plopped down across and was like. Oh, just on this whirlwind as the movie was catching fire. Could you guys believe in that moment, not just how big it was at the box office, but what a cultural force it had become around the world? I mean, I think we were, at that point, we were constantly taking it in from city to city, from country to country, you know, really like, wow, okay, this is the reaction that we're getting from people. You know, this, the kids, the, um, you know, it's really all about the, the children and the kids, man, to see those look, the looks on their faces, um, you know, of admiration and just, you know, and, you know, and just happiness and oh wow, like just to know that type of impact we're making, 
um, was uh, was really special. You know, a time in my life I'll never forget. So it was it was a lot of fun. For what it's worth, my kids still say your line when you took the mask from the museum. You said, "Nah, I'm just feeling it. I just want this." <laughs> they still drop that around the house. <laughs> oh man, that's cool. See, stuff like that is cool, man. That's that's uh, that's what it's all about. They just drop it in. Um, am I right in, in reading your story, Michael? That before Friday Night Lights, when you'd gone out to L.A., it was a bit of a struggle for you, even with the success of The Wire and the other things you'd done, that you were wondering whether or not maybe this was the right thing and you even considered going back home to Jersey? Yeah, you know, nothing's guaranteed, right? So I, even with the success of, you know, The Wire and, you know, All My Children, all that good stuff, you know, there's a lot of talented actors out there. You know, there's a lot of that that, does, that don't, you know, for whatever reason, kind of make it over that hump, you know? Um, and that show, The Wire, kind of, in real time, it wasn't as popular as it was after right. the show was over. So, you know, doors started opening up, the right people were watching the shows that I was doing, you know, so slowly uh, things started to catch on. But at first, when I got out here, you know, it's, you know, life of an actor, you know, you're trying to, you know, you try to put a string of jobs together where you can like, you know, survive and stay out here long enough until you can actually figure out what your career is going to be or what projects you can actually, um, you know, uh, live off of, you know? So I think, you know, in the beginning, you know, I just knew there was a, I had a threshold, there was a moment, right? <laughs> but it's so crazy, like, you know, they say like, right when you get ready to quit, you know, that's the moment. If you just keep going a little bit further, you would you would have you would have made it, you know? So it's a little bit of that, you know, you had that doubt for whatever reason, you just continue to push through and, you know, you know, and here I am, so it's, uh, you know, obviously, I was doing what I was supposed to be doing. Yeah, not everybody who does well on a TV show keeps pushing, though. You know, sometimes that's the moment in time and that's the thing they did. But you kept going with Fruitvale and with Creed and all these films. At what point did you feel like you were a movie actor, really? Because you'd had success in television. When did you feel like, OK, now this is my thing. I'm in movies. You know, Fruitvale for me was the first time that, I, you know, they answered a lot of questions as far as like carrying a film, you know, in a movie. Um, but, you know, I still, you know, you know, it's, it's a, I'm a real chill guy, you know what I'm saying? So sometimes I gotta, you know, I gotta re remind myself, you know what I'm saying? Of, uh, you know, the, the blessings and accomplish that, accomplishments that I've had thus far that, uh, but yeah, it's a, I don't believe my own hype. I don't drink the Kool-Aid, you know what I'm saying? I, <laughs> I just, I, just, I just do the work, man, and try to tell honest stories. And I'm, and I'm happy that, you know, I'm able to make an impact on people and that people enjoy watching my work, you know, and uh, I continue to kind of have that attitude and point of view on it, you know. And part of that progression now is you're going to direct Creed 3, which is amazing. Your directorial debut. I know you're being directed as we speak by Denzel Washington. Is he giving you any pointers on how to do this? Yeah, everybody is, man. I'm, 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 uh, I'll be a fool not to listen to, you know, <laughs> You know, like the greats, you know, and, and Denzel has so many gems and wisdoms to to to, to give. So, um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm looking forward to telling the story and finally stepping behind the camera. Uh, I feel like I've been uh, in my head secretly, you know, observing from that from that type of uh, perspective for a long time and, you know, waiting for the right thing or the right opportunity, you know, the right story to be able to tell. And I, I can't think of a better one than than. Uh, and Adonis and Creed, so I'm really, I'm really excited about this. Is that going to be a tough thing to do, where you've got to see 360 degrees of the film, and then all of a sudden you got to grease up and get, can get in the ring? <laughs> yeah, I think it's going to be difficult. I mean, it's, 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 it's going to be challenging. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's. That's just what it is. Uh, but I look forward to it. You know, um, it, it's something that, you know, I'm as ready as I'm ever going to be. I don't think you're never fully ready for it, but I'm a I'm a jump in the deep end type of guy. So, you know, here we go. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Ooh, the answer's Today Show's newest fan. Little Al Roker.
Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. You, it's funny to hear you say you are a chill guy and you don't get swept up in all the things that have come your way. So how do you react when something like people's sexiest man alive comes to you? I just smile, you? man. Hey, you look, just <laughs> smile and enjoy it. Trust me, I got enough people around me, my friends and family, who give me enough <laughs> that, you know what I mean? It's, 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 you know, they, 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 keep me, they, keep me, they keep me pretty grounded and humble. But it's, it's, it's all fun. You know, it's a big target. Imagine all the group chats and all your oh. friends. And everything that you do is because the sexiest way to live. It's like, yeah, okay, it's annoying after a while. But I met, imagine on one hand it's an honor. On the other hand, you go, oh, I'm going to hear from everybody. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, my, my mom and my aunties, you know, and all my, you know, all my, like, you know, all the women in my family, it's, 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 it's gold. You know, everybody else, it's a target. You, it does seem to me, though, over the last few years, you've become more comfortable with the, the celebrity thing. Is that fair to say you've been more open with your private life and you're in love right now and you've been very open about that? Are you is it easier for you to kind of let that wall down a little bit? You mean, I mean, I think, you know, just understanding the industry and all the, the things that come along with it. You know, it's all it's it's not all glitter and gold. And um, and, and it's, uh, you know, it, it's a it's a transition. You know, but still very private, you know, still, you know, keep a lot of, you know, stuff to myself, you know, but there's certain areas of my life that, you know, I chose to to, to put out there. Uh, more of a way to be like, all right, it's there. Now it's, like, we go all move on, right? And just continue to like, yeah, like we can, we can move on. Like it doesn't have to be the... The, the 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 private eye trying to dig and find out what's the, every little thing so um but yeah i'm happy man and, and it's uh and i and i I'll probably always will you know keep keep that part of my life you know what i'm saying to myself but but it's uh you know nobody's hiding anything well that's interesting that you say that because a lot of people notice that with Lori, you've kind of gone on instagram and it sounds like it's a bit of a strategy to demystify it no, nah, not a strategy, man. It's just more or less like this is what it is, and all right, let's keep it moving. Like it's it's uh that's that I mean that's really it, man. Yeah. Well, I appreciate your time. Um, the film appreciate Without it. Remorse is incredible. We didn't get around to the rivalry with Behringer in Newark, but we're, we'll hit that next time. We'll, we'll get that on the next one. All right, Michael. Thanks for the time. Congrats. I right, appreciate it, man. Thank you. All right. All right. See ya. Welcome to Today All Day. All Day? Today All Day. All Day. This is a long oh, way of asking yeah, who's your okay. favorite character you've ever oh, played. Right. The unicorn. The unicorn. You gotta have the unicorn. <laughs> what is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice things? Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. Yeah. I don't want the rap of Luna. When I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Hi, buddy Cal. Cooking with me. That's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart Today. With simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit now. How wow. good do they look? I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping people. You received tons of letters from people who have been inspired. Let's do the weather out. <laughs> OK. All you got to do is say, it's cold, it's warm, it's raining, it's snowing. That's it. One of our most favorite yes. franchises ever, wow. Ambush Makeovers. Okay. Look at it. It doesn't, it doesn't look, look so good. No, it doesn't look good. Will you judge okay. us in a cook-off? I yes. will. And okay. you guys will definitely win something. Today, all day. All day? All day. Welcome to Today, All Day. Sandra, thanks so much for doing this. It's great to see you. Hi, Willie. Great to be with you. 
I'm very anxious to talk about the chair. I told you I just got to see the first two episodes. Before we do that, though, I want to wish you a very happy milestone birthday. Happy birthday. Much. Thank you. You had an amazing post where you stopped and sort of took stock of your life and career and thanked just about everybody you could think of and recalled all these great shows that, that have made your career what it is. Yes, you know, I'm not a big poster, but I woke up early that morning and my mom had already texted me. <laughs> from there, and she's like, well, basically, they tell you at eight o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, OK. I woke up and I basically spoke with my parents. And milestone birthdays are wonderful times to take stock of things. And I just wanted to, I was really thinking about, you know, my friendships and my family and actually uh, my work. And I just really wanted to thank everybody, you know. It was, it, it, it's a great uh, immediate way to send out a message. I, it was it was great to do. Yeah. Is is it overwhelming in some ways to stop at this point and say, oh, because you are moving so fast in your life and your career to stop and say, oh wow, look at the look at all the things I've done in these years. You know, actually doing stuff like, like this of speaking to people who will ask me questions like this, <laughs> those are the moments that I actually have to stop and go, oh, what have I been doing? What have I been trying to make? Because people will put things into perspectives that I have not thought of. Um, and it's a really good checkup. Well, you've got something great to celebrate with the chair, the new series on Netflix. Oh, there she is. Our first lady chair woman. Explain for people who are thinking about watching it, sort of the, the plot, and also what about this great character drew you in? The Chair is a dramedy, and it's kind of like a workplace comedy that's set in academia. So I play the, uh, the role of ji Kim, Professor Kim, who's just been the newly minted chair in the English department at, a, at Pembroke University, it's a fictitious university. And it, it's centered around a transgressive act that one of the fellow professors, uh, Bill Dobson, played by Jay Duplass, does in class. And it's then navigating as the chair how to manage the fallout from a, a very ill-informed mistake and how to keep um, her, the department, the English department, and in like the humanities relevant. But it also touches on so many things without uh, being pointed at it. It's like what it is to be a woman and a person of color who enters into a leadership role, who's trying to change a very antiquated and patriarchal white system. You know what I mean? How she relates to her students and to her coworkers, how she relates to her elderly father, how she relates to her adoptive daughter. Um, so it was a great opportunity to play such a, a a dynamic and full-fleshed role. And I give all the credit to Amanda Pete who created this world. As you say, she steps into this place that has been run forever by old white guys. And in many cases, these are cartoonish old white guys kind of fumbling around, hanging on to their tenure. Could you dig into some personal experience as a woman of color who stepped into these prominent roles and, and roles of leadership and sort of understand what she was going through? Sure. And I'll also I'll try and frame also that hopefully, hopefully no one is a caricature in this piece. So even though you have, you know, older white professors, male professors, one, you know, the brilliant Bob Balaban who plays uh, Professor uh, Elliot Rents, hopefully you're seeing his perspective on, on the effect of, of being the older generation and perhaps not have paid enough close attention to what the students want and how they need to learn. So I'll just start with that. And then uh, the next part of your question, which is like, do I know what it's like? Um, yeah, yeah, I do. And I, I think that that has got to have informed how I approach, you know, Jian. I, I, I can't exactly specifically point to what, but um, one of the things that I feel like I have learned in my career that is a little bit uh, ahead of Professor Kim is, um, is that change is slow when you are an individual facing an institution. And for me not to lose heart because for anyone who knows who's 
try to enact change. It's never the way that you think it's going to happen. Right. And the challenges are there for you to only get more specific and deeper into your commitment to change. Um, and I, I, you just see Professor Kim just trying to balance all these things at once. Um, and so you have a real good balance of comedy and pathos. Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. This is your last movie. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. All right, it just is. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Dr. Kim's name which as, a, as an Asian woman, you, as an American woman, you say that was really important that her name was authentically Korean. Can you explain that a little bit? Sure. It's like I can trace, I feel like how Hollywood has progressed or widened. You know, when I was on Grey's Anatomy for 10 years as Christina Yang, it was the Obama years. And uh, specifically, the, the show never addressed people's ethnicity, nor did it really kind of address people's home lives. It just was the style of the show. So I never got to really necessarily explore what other parts of Christina was. And then with uh, the show um, Killing Eve, I was able to bring a certain aspect of Eve's uh, uh, cultural heritage in the third season but that's what the show's not really about that it's the show is really about the exploration of and the discovery of of a, a woman's own psyche but in the chair when i first opened that first page of the pilot and i saw that dr kim's name is is jean kim uh i just noted it in terms of the growth of my own career, that now I can I can play a character who specifically has a Korean name, and all the characters are going to call her that name correctly. And I do. It was significant to me. Um, I think uh, there's been a lot of accommodation or denial or just not existence of the fact that people have. Um, they, they're in, in their names. Their ethnicity is 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 in their names. So it was just great to it was great to see, and it was really important to me. Yeah. And it feels like this fits into something you've been thinking about in your recent roles, which is to give authentic Asian experiences in the in the parts you take and in your performances. Different, as you say, from something like. Grey's Anatomy, which just sort of fit into the plot, you can sort of tell more of the story. And I feel like we see that in the chair when she goes home and her father lives with her and we see symbols of religion on the wall, which you've talked about in your, old in your own childhood. So what does it mean to you personally to be able to have that power in Hollywood to say, this is how the role is going to be. This is how I'm going to play that. Well, it's definitely not as let's say cut and dry in that way, because for me, it's more like finding the right collaborators, finding, cause I am, I'm not a writer at this point in my life, you know what I mean? But I'm not, I never wanna, I never wanna limit myself, but uh, uh, it's about 
trying to find the world and 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 the voices that I am interested in in uh, inhabiting and collaborating with. So, you know, Amanda set the whole world. This was always going to be a part of it. Uh, Dr. Kim was always going to be taking care of an elderly parent, and she was always going to be taking care of an adoptive daughter. So no matter what, you get to open up a lot of story dynamic with that. And that was also one of the things that really, really interests me. And is there a lot more of that now, Sandra, is just by virtue of all the different outlets that we have for those shows added with a heightened consciousness and awareness that we need more of it? I, I, you know what? I think so. I'm almost afraid to say, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and anyone who's a person of color knows what I'm doing when I'm saying, I don't even want to say that it might be true, but it might be true because there is more openness to it because there is a, uh, more interest in it, what I hope develops alongside of it is a certain type of patience and a certain type of support that comes in the form of development. You know, voices have to be developed. Do you know if you suddenly want a, a, a storyline based on X, Y, Z, because it's you seem to think that the public wants it, you need to develop the voices to be able to take on those leadership roles to make that happen. Because ultimately what it depends on is that the storytelling is interesting and authentic and true. You know what I mean? Because you can have whoever you want on camera, it doesn't matter. But if it's not interesting, if it is not truthful, I don't think people will watch it. I think that's probably right. And, and as you talk about bringing your own experience to roles like this, I love reading the story of your own upbringing outside Ottawa, where you really had to convince your parents that performance and acting was the thing for you. You were proven to be very right. Um, but what were those early years like when you said, Mom and Dad, I know you maybe don't get this, but this is what I want to do. You know, I'm one of those extremely lucky people who have a good relationship with their parents. And what I've learned uh, from that experience uh, and obviously growing and maturing as a person is that adversity is extremely important in the development of a person's character. And the time, you know, my parents are immigrants from South Korea, you know what I mean? And in a very, very, very typical uh, Korean American immigrant kind of upbringing, just very middle of the road typical education and having a good job and security is very important. Anyone who was a child of an immigrant knows this. Um, so my parents, it was very, very foreign, you know, the entertainment world or the artistic world, it was very, very, very foreign to them. But what I am so blessed with is that the way that they were an obstacle to me, it only makes you tougher in a good way. I've spoken about this before. It's like, you know, if you have the two most important people telling you that you shouldn't do it or that you can't do it, you, uh, and you still do it anyway, you do it anyway. Um, you have, a, uh, you just built an internal confidence and you can only build that by going through it. So when you are pounding the pavement, when people are saying no, when you have self doubt, you already have a certain layer of confidence because you've already surpassed, you know, uh, the the doubt of the two most important people to you. I, I was very lucky in my in my in my career so far, you know, in the early days, I had success quite early. Yeah. And I was able to show them very full pieces, you know, where the entire film was about my character. I did this film early on by Mina Shum called Double Happiness. And it was about this character named Jade Lee who wants to be an actress, is in a very typical Chinese Canadian home. And it's a very simple coming of age story where she just eventually leaves home to pursue her dreams. When my parents saw that, my mom said to me, is this what you basically wanted to tell us? Mm. And I just felt so seen by her, like she got it. I mean, my parents really eased off the, the gas pedal because I was fortunate enough to be able to show them my work. 
and they could understand that um, that there's meaning in in that work. And I think it's a little it's a little tricky and hard for immigrant parents, let's just say, to understand that if their child is an artist, uh, just to to not be afraid, even if they fail, or even if they're hungry and just eating pizza for three days. If they're if you see your child that wants to be an artist in some sort of way, just to just to give them a little space to try it out. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. All right, it just fit too. Today Show's newest fan. A little Al Roker. We began our cross America journey tonight, St. Louis, Austin. Here in Nashville, from Washington, D.C., the side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. This is your last one. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. The moment when you win the Golden Globe for Killing Eve you get up there and they showed on the broadcast, I think before you even got to the microphone, your parents. And your dad stands up and breaks into applause and you're doing okay and then you see them, you whew, you could see it sort of wash over you. What was that moment like to see your parents who were skeptical at the outset stand in the back and watch you receive this huge award and to watch their daughter be so successful at what she chose to do? You know, I have been shameless with my parents. I have brought them to so many awards. They froze. They're really, really froze. But it's profoundly, profoundly satisfying that when you reach a certain type of milestone, and I would say that for me, it was hosting the show, um, that uh, your parents who support you so deeply are actually there in the audience. Yeah, it's profoundly... Um, I, 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 satisfying to be able to come to a certain point in your career when in the moment that you're celebrated, that your parents get to witness it. I mean, you should ask them what they feel. About. <laughs> because it, I honestly, it's, it was, it's such a blur, you know, it's such a blur, but it was also um, really important to me to be able to publicly thank them, you know, and, and, you know, you don't, you, you, I, I mean, I'm honestly just doing it in, in the moment because my parents are there. But, but um, subsequently, I, I just re, I, I, it was reflected back to me that I think that it meant a lot to uh, a lot of child children of immigrants mm. and a lot of uh, Asian American kids and just people uh, to be able to express gratitude and love to their parents publicly. I don't think I have to ask them. I saw their faces that night. I think, they were, I think they were pretty proud. I think they were pretty proud. So you talked about that early success in Canada and then you make the leap over to American television and you mentioned Arliss. I think most people point to Sideways as the breakout moment for you. Did it feel that way in real time when everyone said, oh, 
who's she? I like her. Let's put her in more stuff. <laughs> you know, I think it was actually a timing thing because um, Sideways and Grey's Anatomy happened at the same time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So those are those, uh, you know, just mysterious times of like, you know, uh, the stars are aligned. And I think that did happen. And, you know, working on Sideways was one of the highlights of my career. It's just, I, it, I think it's going to hold up. It's Definitely. been like a while now, but I, I think it still holds up. So that kind of like one, two punch of like sideways and then Grey's Anatomy, it was uh, uh, it was a, a, a real <laughs> a real shot out of the cannon. Um, but I but I also am, am so happy that, you know, it happened in my early 30s. So I already had uh, a, a career behind me and a, and a fairly good amount of grounding to be able to. Uh, receive uh what that meant to suddenly come into people's consciousness and it kind of felt like it seems that with that sideways success you said to yourself i don't have to do the girlfriendy sidekicky thing i can be front and center be a central character when you make those certain like leaps in your career you change the point of view of what you're going to accept mm -hmm. Um, and for me, it was not like, it was not in the terms of, I don't want to be X, Y, Z. Right. It was very much like, I only want to play, um, dynamic characters. I only want to play things that inspire me. And that's, that's always a really challenging time to be able to move your career into a place of inspiration as opposed to of necessity. So mm -hmm. I was very lucky to be able to decide and start practicing that. And that's, that's definitely when Grey's Anatomy came along. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show. In a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. We began our Cross America journey tonight, St. Louis, Austin, here in Nashville, from Washington, D.C., the side of our nation's capital you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. What Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. So Grey's Anatomy comes along. You talk about being shot out of a cannon. There's no bigger cannon to be shot out of in terms of a show that was right in the cultural zeitgeist that people were talking about the morning after all the time. What was it like in your life to be thrust onto that show, to have this big role on the biggest show on TV, to have more and more people interested in your life, to know who you are, to say hello to you on the street. How did it change your life? Well, that's a big question. <laughs> big question. And uh, I don't think that, I mean, I'm guessing that, to be perfectly honest, it was traumatic. Hmm. <laughs> it's traumatic. And the reason why I'm saying that is, uh, I don't know whether it's just I come from a different generation or my temperament as an artist is that you know that the best work or the work that you, or, or the circumstances you need to do your work is with a lot of privacy. Hmm. Um, and that's, and that's just to find the authentic self. And so when one loses one's anonymity, you have to build skills uh, to still try and be real. 
Um, so I know this is probably not an answer that people are particularly interested in, but it is a truthful one. But having been in it, I've I've grown to adapt and I've grown, it really forces you to, to grow internally, for at least for me, internally, to be able to, I, I mean, I went from uh, not being able to go out or not being able to go, like hiding in restaurants or never looking out, to then being able to receive and manage, um, and manage projection, manage attention, uh, manage expectation while not losing the sense of self. And that takes a little while to figure out. How do you do it though? How do you do it when all the eyeballs in the restaurant are on you? How do you say, okay, this is my life. It's not normal, but it's my life. Here's how I'm going to manage it. How did you make those adjustments? Because I've heard the same from other actors who've been shot out of a cannon on a big show or a big movie and all of a sudden their life like that, the weekend the movie comes out is totally different. Mm. Um, well, have a good therapist. <laughs> I'm not joking. Important. Yeah. No, I'm not joking. It's very, very important because there's a lot that one would need to talk about that you should not talk about with your partner or friends or family. You don't burden them with that. It's a very specific road. And so one, have a good therapist. Hopefully you have a good support system as a support network. You know, I am very lucky that I do have a very great support system. Um, and you just have to work at finding your way to stay grounded. And a lot of times that's by saying no. Hmm. You've done well with it, certainly. And from the, the question that always comes up when someone leaves a show like that is, okay, what do you do from there? What next? And here comes Killing Eve and you have this other great success where, as I said, you win another Golden Globe Award. Uh, what was it about that part that so attracted you and what makes that show so popular? People are so obsessed with it. <laughs> I, I can tell you definitely what intrigued me um, was Phoebe Waller-Bridge's tone. Yeah. Because I had not seen it before. And I knew it was fresh. Like, I really knew it was fresh right off the page. And I knew I could, I knew I could follow it. I like the circumstance where, you know, it's this kind of very middle of the road, middle of her life woman and every woman who then develops an extremely dangerous and obsessive relationship with a, with an assassin. Like those are crazy circumstances. <laughs> but what I could also see in the piece, which I was very interested in exploring, that it's about a woman's self discovery. And that was ultimately what was so intriguing. And, and hopefully that element, as well as um, a type of very um, exciting uh, push and pull relationship between Eve and Villanelle is exciting to people. Uh, but mostly, it's, I, I hope it is, is that you see these two women trying to figure out themselves by somehow needing to be in relationship with each other. And that was really interesting. That was really, really interesting to me. Like, how, how do you figure out how to be in relationship with a character that wants to kill you? <laughs> right. <laughs> it's a big question. <laughs> it's a big question. Well, part of the fun of the show is that you have a different woman writing every season. So can you give us a little look ahead to season four of what your fans might expect? Ooh, well, I honestly, I am just in the middle. I'm here in London, just in the middle of shooting the, the season four, the last season of Killing Eve. And I can tell you nothing. I knew it. Except oh, I thought I might break you, Sandra. <laughs> Except that, you know, we're really, really working hard to try and like really honor that relationship. And, and, and to find out what their, how their story not ends, but somehow, somehow finishes at, at this moment. You know, um, that's what we're really working hard on, trying to find that, that, that way to, to service all those characters beautifully. Very diplomatic answer. It felt like you were giving something and you really weren't. You were such a pro. Such a pro. <laughs> Sandra, I really appreciate your time. Congratulations on the chair. It's so fun to talk to you. I know you're busy working, so thanks for taking the time. Thank you so much.
smell it so good. Oh, it smells like pastry. What are you doing? <laughs> um, can we not put your face in the dough? I'm glad it's just us eating it. Hi everybody and welcome to Dylan Dishes, Cooking with Cal. I can't wait to take a look back at some of my favorite Cooking with Cal segments and offer just a few of those tips and tricks that didn't quite make it into the original episode. In today's episode, we are all about apples. Everyone in my family loves apples and I use them in so many different recipes in so many different ways. Just ask Ollie. <laughs> I love taking the boys apple picking. I don't know why, it ends up being one of the most stressful days. Um, you know, somebody has to go to the bathroom, somebody's hungry, uh, there's no parking because the <laughs> apple orchards are so crowded outside of New York City, but I am determined to always take the boys apple picking. I just think it's fun. Once you kind of go along that row and there's nobody else around for a little while and you pick the best apples, you kind of sneak a bite here and there. And the best part is I make so many different things with apples that I love bringing a big bushel of apples home and just seeing what we can do with them. For anyone else who went apple picking recently, here are two easy ways to use up all those apples. First up, my crunchy apple salad. Cal has a list of the ingredients you'll need for this recipe. So let's go through the ingredients, okay? What's in our apple salad? Apple. And zucchini. <laughs> Try again, not zucchini. Salad? So close. S Celery. Celery. <laughs> and what are these? I think you know. Cranberry. You've been snacking on those since we started. Do you know what this is? A nut. It's a walnut. Walnut. And then you know this one. Yogurt. Lots of vanilla yogurt. So this apple salad is a perfect after school snack. It's a good breakfast. It's just a good all around nice healthy alternative. How's the yogurt doing? Do you want a spoon? Gross. You wanna help me with the apple? Let me, let me cut it up into a smaller piece for you. You are actually eating all of my ingredients. No, not that many. Chop it up nice and small. You're doing a lot more eating than cooking. What's your favorite fruit? Apple. <laughs> I'm growing it and it's really hard. While you do that, I'm going to chop up the celery. Okay. I like to make the celery really small. Why? So that it's not too hard to chew. Oh. So come when I was little, yeah. I used to eat this all the time, every single morning for breakfast. Was that a long time ago? It was a long time ago. Even when I first moved to New York, I used to eat it all the time, every morning for breakfast. Really? That's weird. Mix it up. Yep, mix it all together. All right, what should we put in next? How about some of these? Yeah, sure. Sprinkle those all in there? I can pour it. Okay. Perfect. And now let's chop these up a little smaller. Just rock your knife back and forth. <laughs> Look at how small I made these. Whoa! So now we got all our ingredients in here, right? And here's the fun part. Here you go. And this is the medium one or the biggest one? What, bowl or a spoon? Spoon. That's the small one. I have to lick it off. Did you have to look it off? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, because there's a yogurt on it. <laughs> so you can add as much yogurt as you want. It's not really a measurement here. It's more just once everything is all nice and combined. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll add blueberries in here. Oh, I have to look it off. Oh. I just eat it off. So that's it. Super simple, right? I usually make a big bowl of this and then just scoop it out in the morning or you can divvy it up into little Tupperware containers and it's good to go as a grab and go snack. Are we done? That's it, that's all we have to do. Are you gonna taste one? I'm gonna taste one too. A taste test? It's a taste test. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, what spoon should I use? Mm. Mm. Is it healthy? It's very healthy. 
Up next, we are taking apples from sweet to sweeter with one of my favorite fall treats, apple dumplings with a homemade caramel sauce. You don't want to miss this. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. All right, it just made it week-long journey across America from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last movie. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last movie. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? Make the most of your day with... Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show. Oh, in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. We began our Cross America journey tonight, St. Louis, Austin, here in Nashville, from Washington, D.C., the site of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last movie. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to Dylan Dishes, Cooking with Cal. Today's episode is all about using a favorite fall staple, apples. Next up, Cal and I are making apple dumplings with a homemade caramel sauce. This recipe takes a bit more time, a bit more patience, but I promise it's worth it. I first saw this recipe in Better Homes and Gardens' new cookbook. So here's how to make one of my favorite fall treats. There are a lot of steps, but it's still pretty easy, okay? There's only three things. We need the caramel sauce that goes on top, We've got the apples that we're going to fill with this little filling, and we're going to wrap it in pastry dough. It's 
let's get started. Yeah. <laughs> this is a hard apple. That's a nice apple. Let's add the water. She can't eat everything. Pour in the sugar. Mom? Yes. Yeah. And I'm just gonna do half this cinnamon, not all of it. So I'm gonna bring this up to a boil, and this is gonna be our caramel sauce. We still have some things to do. You ready to make the filling? All right, what do you think those are? Mm -hmm. Walnuts. Walnuts. And what are those? Raisins. Raisins. And we're gonna add... Honey. Add a tablespoon of honey. This is gonna be our filling for the apples. Dump the salt into the flour. All the salt? Yeah. Do you know what this is? Mm -mm. What do you think it is? I don't know. This is called a shortening. You wanna make the shortening look like little bits of peas in here. What happens if we eat it? It would taste disgusting. Ready? Like press it down and twist. There you go. Press and twist. Press it hard. All right, now we're gonna add the half and half. Now can I pour it? What are we making? Apple dumplings, remember? Oh, yummy? Yeah. Is it dessert? It is a dessert. When it's done, can I eat one of it? Of course. And you? Yes. It smells so good. Oh, it smells like pastry. What are you doing? Um, can we not put your face in the dough? I'm glad it's just us eating it. All right, here we go with our dough. Oh no, we make the hole. No, don't make a hole! Why? Because no more holes, no holes. And you just start here. Okay. And end all the way over here. Nice! You put the apple here. Can you take a little bit of this? This is our stair hiding, hiding spot. A little cinnamon sugar. I'm gonna pour the sauce over the dumplings. Carefully. Mm. Do you love it? Okay, so if you wanna make this apple dumpling recipe right away, you might be thinking I don't have an apple core like I used, um, but there is a way you can just cut right through the apple. It's, it's tedious, I'll tell you that. In fact, I held off making this recipe until I ordered one of these. <laughs> um, wherever you get you know, kitchen supplies, it's an easy order. Just wait a couple days until it gets there. But if you don't have patience, um, just be careful. And I wouldn't recommend doing this part with the kids because you need a very sharp knife and you literally just have to cut around the core of the apple. So make sure you go all the way to the bottom. This is probably the worst part of the whole recipe, is coring the apple. Just wanna make sure we get to the other side. My kids eat a lot of apples, and whether I'm slicing them or dicing them or doing whatever it is with apples, there's just no good way to get the seeds out. But this, this works pretty well. Okay, so you can either do it that way if you don't have patience, although I think this way is the way to go. So this is what an apple core does. Basically the same thing the knife did, just in all one big swoop. Can you get it in there? Twist it, pull it up, and there you go. That was easier, right? So I'd recommend just holding off a couple days on this recipe and wait till you get your apple core. I mean, because that's perfect. So to core the apple with a knife, you wanna make sure you use a paring knife. They're nice and sharp, they're tiny. If you use anything bigger, I feel like you're gonna cut the whole apple up. Um, and a steak knife would just never work for this. So get yourself a paring knife too. <laughs> 
for all these recipes, go to today.com slash Dylan Dishes. I'll do the chocolate chips. No, I want to. No. Fine. Yay. Let's, you, let's pour it at the same time, Alexander. Three, Three two, one. one. Whee! My name is Alexander Charbonnet, and this is Kids in the Kitchen. My name is Alexander Charbonnet. I'm seven years old, and I'm in second grade. I started cooking when I was five for my mom and my dad and my sister. I started my cooking channel two years ago when I was five. Hi guys, hi friends, welcome to my show. Kids can cook with Chef Alexander. We are making banana muffins with no egg because I'm allergic to egg. My egg allergy um, makes me sad, but I'm more sad because I can eat stuff like other people. Because of my allergy, I can't eat cookies or donuts or like cakes or like a lot of stuff. My mom is awesome because she makes eggless stuff like cookies, cupcakes, and regular cakes. But my mom and I bring um, treats like cookies without egg to school with me so I can enjoy it with my friends. My little sister has a peanut allergy. She can have like peanut butter and jelly. So I feel like she's a special too. My mom was the one who taught me how to cook. Um, my favorite part of cooking is I get to spend special time with my mom cooking. My favorite hobbies are playing video games, um, riding my bike, riding my scooter. Um, I also really love dinosaurs. Here's some, a fact of some dinosaurs. Did you know that the Allosaurus does, doesn't have serrated teeth? And it actually uses jaw. He, he opens his mouth and he slashes his upper jaw into its prey like a hammer. We are making donut chocolate donut cakes. So we have this flour, so we're gonna dump it into the sieve. <laughs> I wanna be a pastry chef because I'm already a pastry chef. I am so excited because today we are making eggless trini macaroni pie and blender muffins with apples, bananas, and carrots. First we're gonna start with the macaroni pie. Here's everything we need to start with. We got butter, we got olive oil, cut up onions, onion powder, garlic powder, black pepper, flour, mustard, cheese, salt, but we also need elbow and pasta and milk. First we're gonna make the cheese sauce. First we're gonna melt the, the butter the, and the olive oil over medium heat. Now the next step we need to add the onions. Make sure you cook it for a few minutes because we don't want the smell of the onions to make us cry. The next step, you need to add the flour and you need to make a roux. A roux is fat mixed with flour. You need to um, whisk it so it doesn't give that raw flour taste. That would taste horrible. This is what's gonna thicken the sauce since I'm not using egg. Now we need to add the milk to the pot, but make sure to add it slowly because we don't want it to spot all over the place. Now we need to whisk it until it's fully incorporated. Next, we're gonna add the mustard. Now we're ready to put in the spices. We got our onion powder, the garlic powder in, and the black pepper in. And the salt, let's put in the salt too.
bubbling, it looks like lava. This is what we're looking for. I wish you guys can smell this. Cause that really smells good. Now for the best part, we put in the cheese. Now we're going back to mixing. The sauce looks like this. This is a little hot, so you know who I need? Mommy! Almost there, up. Oh. It's important to incorporate the pasta into the cheese sauce. We're gonna put in a grease baking dish and then we're gonna top it off with cheese. This looks great. Now we're just gonna add some cheese to on the top. I need to pop this in the oven, so I need to call mom again. Mom! Oh, it looks good. Okay, come and open the oven for me. Okay. Thanks, Mom. Oh, no, thank you. Good job. We're going to let it bake for 25 or 30 minutes. This looks awesome. It wouldn't be complete without my favorite person. Mmm, mm. yeah. We come from a long line of foodies in our family, a long line of cooks, and you're just carrying on that tradition by continuing to be one of the chefs in our family. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Now we're gonna make one of my favorite recipes, blender muffins without egg. They have apples, carrots, and bananas. But to help me, I'm gonna have my sister, Natalie. Come on. Bling. So we're gonna make, introduce yourself, Natalie. Okay, so my name is Natalie, and I'm going in kindergarten soon. And my, my favorite food is fruits and vegetables. Five, I'm five, and I'm Alexander's sister. My nickname is Peanut. And her nickname's Peanut, but she has a peanut allergy. But this also has um, no eggs, so it's Isn't it that safe funny, guys? Now we have this big mixing bowl, so now we're gonna put in all our dry ingredients. Let's start with the flour. Sugar. Oh, flop. Oh, is this a 
Ah, there you go. Put it back. I need to put in the white sugar. Now we put in baking powder. And My turn. Put in baking soda. Now let's put in some cinnamon, like for cinnamon rolls. Let's mix, let's make Finder Muffins. Mix, 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 mix up. <laughs> Agitate all around. Okay, okay. Your turn. Now we need the blender, and now we're gonna ask Mom for the blender. Mom! <laughs> now we're gonna add the the apples, the carrots, and bananas to the blender. Let's start with the apples. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bop, blop. Time for carrot time. We're gonna put in some carrots. And guys, in case you know, these are for our bunnies, but we use them for baking now. Let's put the banana peel in. Break it in half, and then put the other half in. That might be smart. <laughs> it looks weird. I wonder. Look, I'm, trying, I'm trying to get the ones in the on the back. Maybe we should do it together. Let's mix and agitate, agitate, agitate. Let's mix and agitate. Let's do that. Mm -mm -mm. Now let's add. I'll add the butter. Let's do it. Three, two, one. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I'll do the chocolate chips. No, I want to. No. Fine. Let's, do, let's pour it at the same time, Anza. Three, two, one. Whee! Wait, the oats. Ooh, this looks good. Now we have our muffin tin. Yep. We get to spray our muffin tin. Yeah, we need to do it three quarter way full. How about you scoop in and I put it in? Ready to go in the oven now. And now let's get mom. Now it's going to take 18 to 22 minutes. Bye, we'll see you on the next day. I just want to gobble them all up in my mouth. These have been cooling for 10 minutes, so they're ready to eat.
looks like your standard social setting with hands grasping glasses of beer that have names like this. I'm drinking the Main Cascade Wet Hop IPA. Or this. So I'm drinking the new Raspberry Lime Rattler right now. Typical beer lingo with an unexpected twist. It's the full taste experience, the full social experience, just without the alcohol. No alcohol, and yet. Does it taste like beer? It does taste like beer. Absolutely. Good beer. <laughs> Are they surprised by it? For sure. Great tasting non-alcoholic beer is definitely an oxymoron. Such low expectations didn't stop Bill Schufelt and John Walker from creating Athletic Brewing Company in 2017. After Bill, then a hedge fund trader, realized he just felt better when he didn't drink alcohol night after night. Still, something was missing. And without a true beer you were proud of to have in your hand, I felt like such an outsider. And I'd made this positive life choice, but was put in this penalty box all of a sudden. So he teamed up with John, who spent 17 years brewing alcoholic beer. Bottom line, this looks like any other brewery, right? It does. Yeah, traditional brew house, traditional cellar, traditional packaging line. John said he'd only go to market with something that tasted like the craft beers he had been making his whole career. We took about nine, ten months to actually do hundreds of batches to find our process and what actually tasted good. And does it taste good now? It tastes excellent. Rather than just take his word, there we go. John offered me a taste test. Tastes oh. just like a beer. That's the goal. They don't just make one beer, but dozens of styles, from crisp goldens to dark stouts, hoppier IPAs, and seasonal flavors, too. More options to meet the growing demand, from pregnant women to those who are giving up alcohol for a few days, a month, or longer. I came into this world through the road of recovery. I quit drinking four years ago, and I opened it, I cracked it, and I was just like, thank you. <laughs> in recent years, big beer brands like Heineken, Stella Artois, and Budweiser have all unveiled non-alcoholic options. It's believed the global market will grow from $923 million in 2020 to more than $1.7 by 2028. And Athletic is the fastest growing brewery in the country, alcoholic or not, two years in a row. What do you think is the future of non-alcoholic beer? I think it's going to continue to grow, you know, as more and more people realize that this can taste delicious just as good as alcoholic beer, but you can maintain your life a little better. A brewing business that's no beer bust. For today, Joe Fryer, NBC News, Stratford, Connecticut. Okay, very cool. Should All we right, try it's these? It's 8.21 a.m. somewhere, so, huh? What do you say <laughs> we do this? Let's do it. Okay. 0.5% alcohol. Peter's not the biggest drinker. I'm a lightweight, I acknowledge, but... This is the most alcohol he's had in quite some time. That's not bad. Don't chug it, Peter. You're going to be tipsy. <laughs> my bad, my bad. Ooh, that's going to be a good way to that's start the day. That's good, actually. That's yeah, very good. good. Yeah. Yeah, it tastes like... It does taste like beer. I think that's the bottom you line. You keep talking, I'll yeah. keep drinking. Just call when you need them all. Ooh, let it go. The Today Show's newest fan. This is the moment. A little Al Roker. What am I doing here? What am I doing here? Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. It's a sisterhood of restaurants with a purpose, run by young women, finding inspiration in their own stories. Chef Zyla Cadillo taps into her Mexican heritage to create her cuisine. My restaurant is Etheria. It is a mezcal bar with vegan-inspired Mexican dishes. 
Chef Shinari Freeman leans into her southern roots for recipes. My restaurant is called Caden. It is southern soul food, plant-based focus. And Chef Amara Garib, daughter of an Ecuadorian mother and an Egyptian father, gets her inspiration from her father, who operated a pizza parlor. My restaurant is called Soda Club. It's a wine bar, and it's a plant-based uh, Italian fresh pasta. Did you catch this detail? All three skipped the animal products, but not the flavor. Okay, I have to say, when you hear Italian food, when you hear Mexican food, when you hear soul food, I mean, there's a lot of cheese in those. There's a lot of meat in those. I'm Mexican. I grew up with my mom making Mexican food. How is it to make these particular types of food plant-based? For soul food, one thing you have to definitely focus on is the flavor profile. So just playing around with textures a lot, uh, different flavors, cooking techniques. I think the Italian food, you just stick with fresh pasta, you can't go wrong. Mexican people are indigenous people, and a lot of our food is from nature and from the gum. So I feel like it easily translated to being vegan. Raise your hand if you're a vegan. Okay, so Amira, you're not. What was this process like? I mean, were you like missing the cheese at all on top of a pasta or no? It's really easy to just cover something in cheese and it's delicious. <laughs> and then it tastes good. <laughs> yeah. It was more challenging because I was just trying to find substitutes to make it more traditional, but not traditional at the same time. We yeah. also have a group chat where one of us will be like, this is a whack cheese, don't use it, or this <laughs> yeah. is a really good one, you should try it out, <laughs> stuff like that. You're all under 30 and you have the titles of executive chef at restaurants in New York City. I mean, how cool is that? <laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> <Same>. <laughs> How's this been to go through together? Better than going alone. <laughs> yeah. That's true. We're able to learn a lot from each other mm -hmm. um, and also learn a lot about ourselves, how we cook, and how to run restaurants. Their boss had full faith they could do just that. Ravi DeRossi, founder and CEO of Overthrow Hospitality, who owns all the restaurants, decided to give them a shot at starting their own culinary concepts when they were working at the company in different positions. Was it this purposeful decision to give three women of color this opportunity to be executive chefs of New York City restaurants? I think subconsciously intentional, mm. if that makes sense. Mm. They were already in the company and the best suited for these positions. Over 65% of our 300 some odd employees were women and people of color. So we made the very clear decision to put more people of color in places of authority. So as they're hiring, they see through the lens of their selves. Of course, a taste test had to be part of this assignment to see how they stand up to the real thing. First, plant-based Italian from the Soda Club. So where should I start? Definitely with the ravioli. With the ravioli, okay. That's my favorite, yeah. That is amazing. You good? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm having a moment. Next, vegan-inspired Mexican food from Eteria. The mango salsa looks delicious. It was so good. Oh my goodness. And finally, I had to try a dish getting rave reviews. Fried lasagna, a soul food favorite at Cadence. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm blown away. Sign me up. <laughs> I know, right now, all three women say they come up with these innovative recipes by doing their research, which really just means getting to go out to eat a lot. And oh, they all uh, say I'm they're in. more focused on the flavor and mm -hmm. the texture rather than just making sure that it mimics non-vegan food. And I have to say, when I was eating that, it's not like I was eating vegan dishes. I was just eating great food. Yeah, see, mm. I think that's the mistake a lot of people make. It's like, don't make it like it's like this. Right. Just make it that what it, it is. is what it is. I agree it's just that. Good Celebrate food. that. And it happens to be made with some things that you might not be used to eating. I think the texture. this is the way of the future. Yeah. I think you're always on trend. We're all in. There we I go. We'll see more of these around the country where you live perhaps too. Thanks, all right, Savannah. it's easy to be Thank vegan you, if there's these great options. I know you got a plane to catch. Yeah, yeah I, know. I do. I know. You got I'll see this. if I make it. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. 
We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. What Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. This is your last movie. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. I'm on a mission to get to the NBA. I'm ready. I'm ready to work. Jalen Lewis has always been a dreamer. How long have you known you wanted to be a professional basketball player? I'll say since I was three. Since I really like started figuring out the game, I knew it was for me. And the game's been good to him. Mm. The Oakland native is 6'9", number two in his draft class, and at 16 years old already, one of the hottest young players in the country. I've heard that you're decent on the court. I can make a few shots, I'm all right. But Jalen's forging a new path to the pros. He's giving up his high school and college eligibility to play for Overtime Elite, a brand new basketball league for the world's top 16 to 19 year olds. The inaugural class of 27 players are considered pros because they're paid to play. Contracts start at $100,000 a year. Jalen's multi-year contract is reportedly worth a million dollars. He's now the youngest professional basketball player in U.S. history. It's a lot of money. It is. It's like something that no one has really done at 16. That's why I see the opportunity. It's life changing. Yeah. Jalen and his new teammates live and train in Atlanta. They're split into three groups of nine and will play elite prep schools in each other through a 37 game season with international play expected next spring. When the athletes aren't at practice, they're in class learning about financial literacy, social activism, mental health, and the business of basketball. So are we teaching them to be businessmen or, or basketball players? All of the above. All of the above. All of the above. OTE leadership is uniquely qualified to understand the importance of both. The three I talked to have a combined 70 years of coaching, playing, and executive experience in the NBA and NCAA. Why was it so important to allow the guys to profit off their, their likeness and their name? A lot of younger players, especially some of the, the newer stars in the league, got their start connecting with Overtime's fans and building community online. And so how could we, of all organizations, not acknowledge that value in the form of a contract? And they've caught the attention of some impressive investors. Drake, Jeff Bezos, Carmelo Anthony, Kevin Durant few dozen NBA players. Why do you think so many of these men and women have decided to pony up so much money? You have professional athletes, you have entrepreneurs, you have musicians, all people who excel at what they do and have, in many cases, taken alternative paths. They see themselves in this opportunity. Drake didn't have to go to the Berkeley School of Music. He was quite fine without it. So the idea is to produce NBA players. That is certainly a major goal for us. We want to see as many of them as possible in the NBA because that's every kid's dream. A dream that Jalen Lewis is more than ready to make real in a few years. For now, though, he's enjoying being 16. That means talking to girls, playing video games, and debating basketball legends. Greatest player ever. It's not a trick question. I'm just going to go with LeBron James. LeBron? Yeah. How many championships does he have? Four, right? How many does Mike have? He got six. Right. You need to teach the kids some history of basketball, coach. We decided to settle things where else? On the court. Oh, I'm feeling it. I wouldn't even warm yet. Hang on. What are you going to do? Oh. Oh. Come on, over time. Oh, yeah. now he's showing off, coach. Now it's a back down game. Oh, I'm in there again. You dribble too much. Oh! Oh! oh. 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 Look at the D. How about we call it a draw? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Damn. I'm out of breath. 
Oh, oh you oxygen. Lost three to one, and wow. you're exhausted. I, I did. Yeah. We only played for five. And, and the kid, the, I mean, the, yeah, he's number two in the country. Yeah. Uh, OTE season, by the way, kicked off this weekend. They played a few prep schools uh, at home in Atlanta. No surprise, they won all of their games. Also, no surprise to anyone that Jalen, uh, he put up 20 points. In his first game? What you would call a draw. Yes. <laughs> exactly. So this is, I mean, it's kind of hard to wrap your mind yeah, around. It right. It's such a new concept. But, I mean, the NCAA is going to start paying yes. players. So does right. that make it a harder sell? I mean, it seems like the big pull for, for players to not go college route is to get paid yeah. at the yes. OTE. Yes. And some players in the NCAAs, when they change the rules, they'll make money. Everyone in this league makes money. Yeah. Yeah. The minimum size are $100,000, and they can cash in on their, their their name and likeness. And of course, the flip side though is you 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 can't go to college. Yeah. So what happens then? I mean, the, the the thinking is that most of these kids, if not all of these kids, either end up in the NBA or they play overseas. They play internationally. These are these are the best kids around the country. The bigger question is going to come into play, I think, in a couple of years from now, when you've got the the blue chip programs, your Dukes, your UNCs. Mm -hmm. right. They're now competing with the overtime elites right. and other programs like this for top mm -hmm. talent. So there it are, makes some sense, though. Kevin Garnett, Kobe Bryant, uh, LeBron. The list goes on if people came right out of high school. Yeah, true. So right. that pathway is not. But uh, but how many of them to see. of those caliber players are these kids? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And the for its part, the NBA, they're okay with it right yeah. now. Okay. So. Okay. Right. Interesting. That's cool. Interesting. <laughs>
oldish. I mean, what's yeah, it, yeah. What, what does it feel like going up against guys now who are, are quite literally almost half your age? You know, it was a trip. I think it was around the last Olympics. I, I remember hearing the announcers going, I'm dropping in the oldest competitor, Sean Wright. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> I forever, I've been the youngest competitor. So, um, so that was a big change. Um, I kind of wear it proudly now, though. You know, mm -hmm. you've got amazing athletes like Tom Brady and, um, you, you know, sure. th that are yep. that are getting into their older years and, and still holding it down. So I'm... I'm I'm feeling good about it. I like the the inspiration from the others, and um, and it's so exciting for me. I, I was kind of tripping out the other day, just thinking about, you know, there's this magic moment when you make the team. You're like, wow, I get to be an Olympian again. Just yeah. to go is so incredible. So um, one step at a time. Going to try to make the team, and then uh, set the sights on uh, China. I love it, Sean. You great. always make us smile. Yeah. I mean, every time we talk with you, you're just such a good guy. And Sean. this is a guy. She, hey, age truly you. is just a number, yeah. Sean, because you, you you make yep. it and and you make us all proud. And so, as, as the oldest guy on this Olympic team, yeah, <laughs> I can tell you, yeah. you, just, you, you, you keep the youngins on your toes, my friend. Sean yeah, White. Yeah, right. That's that's the goal. We, <laughs> we will see well, you. Hopefully, we'll see you guys and uh, see you all in China. Yeah. No, hopefully, no, hopefully about it. We will see you in Beijing. We know you'll be there. Sounds good. Uh, and again, as Al pointed out, you always make us so proud. So, oh, and by the way, folks, Thank in case you, you hadn't heard, uh, you can catch all the action of the Winter Olympics. Al, there's the music. There. All the action starting February 3rd on the networks of NBC I love it. and Peacock. after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. All yeah, right, it just needs to. The Today Show's newest fan. Al Roker. Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. This your last movie. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. No celebration would be complete without one of Team USA's biggest names. We're talking about Michaela Schifrin. She is a superstar, <laughs> two-time Olympic gold medal winner. She has big plans for the games, big goals, and she's already off to an incredible start. She won the giant <laughs> slalom, yes. won it in the season opening World Cup event just last weekend. Michaela, you're off and running. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So, I mean, there's a long time in yeah. skiing terms between now and the Olympics. Mm -hmm. But you do have big goals. What are they? Oh, yeah, big, <laughs> big old goals. Those goals, they'll, they'll get you every time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I am, right now I'm a little bit focused on the World Cup season, but I mean, your eyes always set a little bit on the Olympics. Mm -hmm. And uh, after coming back from Solden and winning the first race, I feel like it was, it's like the first check mark on my journey to hopefully be able to compete in every event at the games. That's hopefully wait, compete every, in every, every event, event, every alpine games. skiing event. No, well, that's that's, that's Michaela, only you could even consider that yeah. as a potential right. because you excel in, in mm -hmm. both kinds of ski racing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So there's there's six six alpine events total. And I wanted to do that in South Korea. Uh, mm -hmm. I actually wanted to ski in five events in South Korea, and it a, a lot of things happened that just made it not mm -hmm. possible. Um, and it looks like 
you know, it, it might be some difficult weather in, in Beijing. We'll mm -hmm. see. Yeah. But I think with anything I learned from South Korea is that you just have to roll with the punches. And well, there are a lot of there are a lot of that. cool things about you. One of them is you say that you are not defined by your success. I mean, I feel like you're a really grounded human being. Like oh. if you don't have a great day. <laughs> So what? Like, you seem like you are secure in what you do. So when you're getting ready to go down and do one of your runs, like, what's what's kicking through your head at that moment? Oh, I, I'm i just trying to focus on my skiing as, yeah. as much as possible because there there are some athletes who are so driven just to win that just their, their motivation to win alone is what actually gets them to the finish line faster. But for me, it's always been about good skiing and like the turns that I make along the way. So I don't know, it's a little bit like that metaphorical. It's, it's the journey, not the end destination, yeah, yeah. but it's true for me. That's how I've always had my best races, just skiing well. Mm -hmm. and, and just in case people, you know, last they were checked in with you, you were winning gold four years <laughs> ago, at, excuse me, five years ago at the Olympics. And now here you are winning again in your most recent <laughs> mm -hmm. race. In between, you've had incredible challenges. Mm -hmm. You lost your father. Mm -hmm. You've dealt with anxiety mm -hmm. and, and the stress of, uh, of that, mm -hmm. and then a pandemic to boot. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling, and how mm -hmm. has that journey been for you? Um, well, I guess it's just, it's been life, and yeah. I think everybody's dealing with something. I, you know, we're all dealing with the pandemic, so that's one thing we all have in common. Um, for me personally and my family dealing mm -hmm. with uh, unexpected death of my dad was the most difficult thing I've ever survived. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, I mean, it's okay. Like, it's okay to talk about it. Um, I think it's been, over the last couple of years, it's been important to talk about. And a lot of people actually seem to be able to relate to that on some level, because aside from the pandemic, everybody's dealing with something on a daily basis, on a weekly basis. And there's a lot of, like, loss and grief and sadness out there, but there's also a lot of strength and hope. And I think it's important for us to all be able to connect on the more positive side of it. And you like really that. personify yeah, that. You do. After, after your dad passed, did you think about whether or not you would ski again? Was that something that you thought about? Yeah, I did. I, I wondered if it was really worth it. Um, I mean, there's a really long time that I didn't really feel like it was worth it to care about anything. So it mm. seemed like I'm not going to go ski race again because the, the most fundamental thing of an athlete is that you have to care about your sport and mm -hmm. you have to care about doing well at your mm -hmm. sport. And I just didn't. I just thought mm -hmm. I don't care about actually really anything in life. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, it, it's been a, a long process to get that motivation and that actually the feeling of caring back. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, I, <laughs> a lot more good days than bad yeah. now, but... It's still difficult. It's sure. not easy to talk about, but I'm yeah. so glad you did because yes. I want people to know what a triumph it is. <laughs> yeah. What you just did last weekend, yeah. what you're setting out to do. Thanks. It's a triumph yeah. in every single way, yeah. just you being here. You guys are going to make me cry. No, <laughs> but I just, um, you yes. know, so Thanks. you're also a huge, I just want to say before you go, I love that you're a huge fan of the Olympics and I heard that, actually I heard your, we were in Tokyo, we yeah. heard you screaming for the athletes all the way yes. back in the U.S. Yes. You're a huge me. fan. Do you mm -hmm. watch, I heard you taped the Olympics, and then would watch them yeah. later. Yeah, we were taping everything, and then we had it going <laughs> streaming on Peacock and, like, always in the background. And um, the the gym I work out back home at the Westin is... Um, they always had it on in multiple TV screens. So yeah. I'm doing my squats and I'm looking up and I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, this is so cool. I'm like, one more breath. Well, oh you can God. guarantee that they're going to be watching you doing yes. the exact same thing. Well, Michaela, we are cheering we you are. on. Congratulations. You. So happy you're here with us. Go get them. Suni Lee, the U.S. women's gymnastics superstar, is marking her stellar run in Tokyo where she won three medals in a pretty permanent way. Check it out. Suni shared this picture on her Instagram story. Oh, she did it. Of her in what appears to be a tattoo parlor with the Olympic rings right there on her forearm, and the caption did a thing. <laughs> it's pretty common for Olympians to celebrate their accomplishment. With some fresh ink, teammate Simone Biles got her Olympics tattoo after she brought home five medals at the Rio Games in 2016. And I feel like, you know, so often... What do you want to get a tattoo of? What's really important to you? But if you come home with medals from the Olympics, it's like a no-brainer. Yeah, I like where she put it, too. It's subtle. It's cool. Mm -hmm. You a tattoo girl? 
I do, if I win a gold medal in the Olympics, I will get a tattoo. Is that a promise? Yeah. Okay. I was going to say, we may have to be a little patient. I've got the giant eagle here. Oh, does uh -huh. it wrap around the back? In action, yeah. sorry, that's Caleb Dressel. No, but it, it looked cool on him. Well, hey guys, thanks for being here. We really appreciate it. Uh, I the the name of this show, Family Game Fight. Uh, it it sounds a little aggressive. Uh, it's not a good name. That's what I I'm said. I'm glad you pointed it out. There are we, a lot of flaws in the show. Yeah, this yeah. is this is but one of many. But yes, uh, not only that, but it it it's very hard to say. Your muscle memory wants to say Family Game Night. So even Kristen, who I have to say, pound for pound is the most accurate, precise speaker on planet Earth. When she has to do recording for movies and match her lips to the to the screen, one mm -hmm. take. I watch it all the time. She's a master. She fumbled family yeah. game fight. Because a you want to say family game night. And that is the feeling of the show. Because it but it's two mm -hmm. families and because they don't know each other and you were building it up as a, a big it's a battle. It's a battle. We added the word fight. We're still mulling over whether that was the correct. We're decision. stuck with it. Yeah. Now just we painted ourselves into a corner and here we are. So so what's the premise? How what what constitutes the fight, the battle? What are they playing? How are they doing this? Lots of games, lots of weird games. There's a there's a game called Pie Rollers where Dax and I each get a mystery word and we have to choose how many clues do we give you? before you can guess the mystery word. And we basically bet. And then who, whichever family takes the bet, the losing family gets a pie to the face. That's a bad oh. game. Well, they, they get they get multiple pies multiple to the face. There's pies. nothing that's bad in the show that doesn't also then occur a million times. Yeah. So, and, and we, well, what makes this game show, I think much different is A, it originated from Kristen and I doing a, a bit on Ellen called um, Taste Buds, Taste Buds, where we're blindfolded and I'm tasting a banana. Oh, they're yellow. They grow on trees. Monkeys eat them. Eucalyptus. Eucalyptus. Is what I said. Al, no. I said. No, 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 no. That's a koala clue. <laughs> So we played this game on Ellen, and it was just an unmitigated disaster for about three and a half minutes. We, and yeah. we are not in on the joke, but it we is. We were really fighting. And it's objectively the funniest thing we've ever been a part of together as a team. So we we stood back from it. And we were like, it's pretty hysterical watching how frustrated we are with each other. What if this was a whole show? So what's different about our show is that we're also competing against each other. So we're, we're the mascot of our team and um, we go head to head nonstop. And we're trying to win, you know, and each family that comes on and it can be a pandemic family, a group of friends, anyone who considers themselves family. It doesn't have to be mm -hmm. the Manson family. OK, that 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 might might end a little a little differently. As yeah. you said, it's a dangerous show. And Dax is fighting for his family. I'm fighting for my family at, to win $100,000. And we're getting ice ice buckets dumped on our head and down our back. They hook up a tube in this brain in this game called Brain Freeze with an ice, a big ice watery chunk that has to go down your back and down your pants. And it is one of the most uncomfortable things I've ever done. And we did it 18 times in a row. Oh, my God. It, it would seem... And correct me if I'm wrong, but that you're tempting fate as a couple by, I mean, couples have enough conflict without adding to it and having a national television audience watching. Are, is there any, were there any, has, was there any hesitation in doing this? I think what you're, I think what you're saying is it's arrogant and you know what? You're dead right. <laughs> <laughs> it's very cocky of us. To leave a house with a six-year-old and an eight-year-old, where we're already going to kill each other, and then we we drive twelve minutes to Warner and Brothers, and then just do it for another sixteen hours straight. Yeah. Um, well, like hey, it. let's stress test this thing. Let's see what it'll bear. What we're really made of. <laughs> you, know, you know, Kristen, you mentioned you know like some pandemic families. You know, we've all we're all coming out of this. Uh, uh, are there any lessons? 
that we might have learned during the pandemic that you see in with these these families that that show that they've learned something during this stressful time? I mean, I would say that a lot of the families that we were we had on the show, they they were very close. They were teammates and like to to the best definition of that. And I think that that's because a lot of these people that came on the show, they spent the last 18 months together. And I mean, certainly learned what we learned, which is that patience and grace is key. I mean, whenever when life is busy, you can um, make an argument that you're allowed to be snappy with someone. But when you're just sitting in a house, you're sort of like, I've got two choices. I could be frustrated with this person because what they're doing is annoying me, or I could just choose patience and grace and, and give everybody a little bit of a free pass like I would be asking for. And so the, the families seemed, I mean, there was a group of Bruins football players. There was firefighters. A, uh, a group of firefighters that had spent the whole pandemic even like working together because that stuff doesn't shut down just because we have to stay indoors. Um, a group of sisters that spent it together. But you're right. Um, as the saying goes, you know, you find out who your friends are in adversity, not in triumph. So I think for the last year, people have They've really figured out like, oh yeah, who who would I pod with? Who who can I count on to do this? Who do I trust? There's so yeah, I think I think a lot of people have come out of this with a sense of like who who that core is. I, I'm I'm fascinated by um, your 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 the choices you guys make in that. So here you are uh, squished together during this pandemic with your kids. You're uh, and you know admittedly driving each other nuts. So you get out of the pandemic, and the first thing you do is get into an even smaller space in an RV and and start driving. So w explain that choice to me. Okay, okay. I mean, is do you have is this a 6-hour segment cuz I, I got to start it. by saying I'm 46, time is boogieing by. I mean, it is blowing by. I'm sure it's going even at a, at a faster rate for you. I'm coming I'm old. To, well, not just that you're old, but time is, it, it collapses on itself, right? Sure. So a year for me is one forty-sixth of my life. For my eight-year-old, it's one-eighth of her life. Those are different. So I'm obsessed with novelty. I think when you are experiencing new sights, new smells, new tastes, that you are actually slowing time down. You're taking in more data and you're slowing time down. My example would be you go on vacation. First three days, you're like, man, I feel like I've been here for a week. Last two days are like that. So if you just keep that motorhome moving, you never get to those last two days. And and do you feel the same way, Kristen? I do. I do. Well, that's also a very, very good argument. And in our house, the best, most sound argument wins. So it's I can make arguments that like, well, it might be slightly uncomfortable in the motorhome. And then when I look at those two arguments in comparison, I'm like, yeah, I'd take a tiny amount of discomfort, which it really isn't for a time stretching out and for some reason our family the four of us have learned how to cooperate in a small space better than a large space and oddly i would say that brings back to the pandemic lesson you make different choices when you can't escape when you are with someone face to face all the time you choose wisely i feel like and you can we we were we got along great the girls like barely fought I, I think we do have some some history of like as a little team we'll go away Kristen will go work somewhere so all four of us go to a hotel for some period of time we fly together we do I think we've had like a, a lot of little uh compartment one of yeah, them's knocking at the, at the door even though they know you they take can't it you take the question I'll get the child hold on said we're on tv right now we're on the news and she said okay <laughs> and and this i'm sure is about the doll's birthday that we found She's out yesterday the that it's some, some... her doll's birthday and now we have to order a cake and she wrapped like six presents yesterday and now we got to celebrate she's taking it very seriously anyway wow that's, that's she's good. planning a bacchanalia for this but season. as teammates as dax was saying because we travel as a family when he works or when i work we support each other no matter how crazy the idea so we will be celebrating gloria the doll's birthday this evening for breaking news in our changing world download the nbc news app make the most of your day with today in 30. we give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day.
These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Here's, here's the thing, and you talk about, Dax, you talk about uh, uh, gender assumptions. And I think people always assume that boys smell worse than girls. And as the father of two girls and a boy, uh, I, I can tell you that that's not necessarily so. And I understand that there's an issue in, in your house with that. Well, they, sm they smell like vinegar. And I, I can't compare them to boys, but it's all kids. And that's, I think you're referring to when we bathe them we just it's a smell test it's a foot smell test and then you just pop them in the water or the shower or the bath yeah but prior to that it's it's too much work so it's every couple especially of in the summer so something happens in summer right you you loosen up the bedtime all of a sudden you re we realize like oh geez now we're watching tv with these kids at like 11 p.m this went off the rails and then you're also you're just bathing them far less and you're kind of leaving them in charge of it, which they're bad at it. And then, yeah, a whiff will hit you and you go, oh, it's time. Yeah. In fact, it's, it was probably time yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but here we are. Is So was that the uh, uh, impetus for your line of Hello Bello for like soaps and, and products for kids? Get them clean. Our kids were. Our kids were because we, um, you know, we, we were overpaid and we live in Los Angeles. So we had, we had our, uh, any product that might have been fantastic, we had access to, we could afford. And at a certain point, we we're like, huh, this it's kind of weird if you live in Michigan, where we're from, and you are middle class, you probably don't can't have all the stuff we had. And we were just in a really weird position where we could approach a Walmart and, and start with the economy of scale that allowed us to do really premium, healthy, organic stuff for half the price of the other stuff. We say it's your mom's ingredients at your dad's prices. And we make the <laughs> amazing diapers. Hello Bella has the best diapers. And they come in a diaper box when you get the bundle that turns into a toy. Like it'll turn into an airplane. It's like a foldable box. So it's race car. Yeah, or a race car or a lemonade stand. We're trying to make it very cool. Or and kindling for your fire in the winter. Oh, it's even better. <laughs> Want. And then a it's lot like, of good. It's like the Transformers of, of, of kids stuff. Yeah, we're trying to make it fun. And yeah. all the stuff you would need for a baby or a kid. And we're putting a lot of thought into it and uh, trying to bring it to the masses because it's about half the price of anything else. So the, the girls aren't babies anymore. What, what, now that you're, they're out there and they're, they're these independent, free thinking, free range kids. What 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 are they coming home with? It still just kind of gobsmacks you sometimes. Well, currently, in into our great horror, our eight year old has taken an interest in musical theater. So, what's great is you know, this is really really what you're die. What we're we're dying for as parents is like you push all this stuff on them zero to eight. You know, why don't you try soccer? Why don't you try this? You know, our life was just taking them all these places they didn't want to be. And, this, and we did not push acting because we want nothing to do with it until they're older. We, I, we don't want to drive to auditions and stuff. So lo and behold, our just she's studying like crazy. She's learning like reams of dialogue and songs and we're, and she's just on fire for it. And we're, we're, we're not a part of that. It's just happening. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of interesting. Yeah. It's a very, like, it's a parenting theory where you just follow the kid. And so we kind of got to follow it. She's loving it. She's doing a lot of little plays. I shouldn't say little, she's doing a lot of plays and she's doing a great job. Yeah. And the younger one is all over the place. 
Yeah. We don't know what her deal is yet. She's planning. She's she, apparently she's an event planner in the making because she has a birthday party for a stuffed animal at least once a week. Yeah. Hey, everybody's got to have a skill. Welcome to today all day. All day. Today all day. All day. This is a long oh, way of man. asking. Yeah. Who's your favorite okay. character you've ever all played? The right. unicorn. The unicorn. You gotta have the unicorn. <laughs> What is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice things. Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. I don't want the wrath of Luna. When I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cut. Cold Cut. My buddy Cal cooking with me. Dad's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart Today with simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit now. How wow. good do they look? I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping people. You received tons of letters from people who have been inspired. Let's do the weather out. <laughs> okay. All you got to say, it's cold, it's warm, it's raining, it's snowing. That's it. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it, I know that it can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at five on NBC News Now. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. So your parents, your producers, your, your actors, actresses, your, your game show hosts, what, I mean, you guys leave this crazy life. Is there anything that you've got on the bucket list that you haven't done yet that you want to tackle? I'm recently obsessed with Formula One, so I do intend to go to uh, see some races in foreign countries, which um, my lovely bride is going to facilitate because she took a movie in England and... Uh, in September, and the, the conversation literally went like this. She said, so I was pitched a movie. It happens in England. It's going to be with my favorite singer, Ben Platt. Uh, it's short. I've already figured out what Formula One races you could go to. If you're in England, you could base out of there. Like she came with the big carrot. And I was like, hold on a second. So I might get to go to Turkey to the Formula One race. And she said, yeah, I think that could happen. And I was like, you should take this movie. <laughs> this is a, sounds like a great movie because we do when we take any work we make decisions as a group like nobody mm -hmm. just something like I, none of neither of us would go to new zealand for six months to shoot it would just be crazy stressful on our family so i knew i had to come up with a really good pitch if i wanted to do this movie and thankfully he bit and so you know we'll be traveling safely this fall mm -hmm. um i won't i'm gonna um, be juggling chainsaws the whole flight yes. tail but anything we haven't done, I don't think so. I don't know. We don't strategize, to be honest. It's pretty loosey-goosey around here. It is. And I got to say, it's a great, great freedom. We I lamented about time moving faster. But the freedom of getting older is, is that 
I don't have aspirations anymore. I'm, there's no one I'm trying to be. Uh, we're just here. Uh, sometimes someone calls and says, you want to come over and do this thing? And, uh, and then we do it. Like it's, it's, it's transitioned, at least for me, where it's like the, the, the goal has kind of been a race and it's, I love it. So now it's just really about process every time. Like, yeah. Would that be fun for us? Would, would we enjoy doing that? And well, that's a humongous luxury that is new to us. Yeah, I'm I'm a huge animation fan, and I would say you you both have some pretty cool animation projects coming up. Some cooler than others, but yeah, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm in the Paw Patrol movie, which I did with the sole goal of having something my kids would excited be excited to see me in. It's a very egotistical driven decision, and as luck would have it, in about the two years it takes to make a movie I've noticed we're not watching Paw Patrol as much as I would like. I had this whole fantasy where they were going to be counting down the days till Friday. I was going to take them to the movies. We're going to do popcorn the whole night. And I'm like, Hey guys, no one wants to check out Paw Patrol this weekend. Wait, you guys are watching sitcoms. When did this happen? How about you, Chris? Well, I, um, two of my friends um, had this idea to create a, a kid's cartoon in the wake of a lot of arts programs being cut from public schools because the budgets just aren't there. And music was so pivotal to me. It brought me to acting. It brought me to so many different things in my life. So we created this show called Do Re Me. It'll be on Amazon in September. And Do Re and Me. Do Re and Me. I play me. Um, and it's about three little songbirds. And it is entertainment for children, but we have pushed in a lot lot of there's music theory ideas they live in this place called bebopsburg where like instruments grow on trees we talk about different instruments then we talk about different types of music from around the world and it's really a music education class but masked as a kid's cartoon so your kids are sort of absorbing all these things that data and science tells us helps their brain with math with communication with social activities like music actually does that for your brain it's why they play little einstein for babies when they're in the womb. It really does great things for your brain. And so, yeah, these three little songbirds. And then we'll have like games to go along with it that will be educational where the kids can make their own music and they can learn how to, you know, have teammates in a band and stuff. So we're, we're really hoping that um, fills the gap of music education for kids because I think every kid deserves it. doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin. Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? in our changing world. Download the NBC News app. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. I love the title, Queen Pins. I mean, it's just, it's perfect. D tell me about this. It's a baller title. Well, it's, it's a true story. Uh, about these suburban housewives who um, started, felt down on their luck, started a counterfeit coupon organization, and they laundered $40 million. And you can read about it in the news. And um, Aaron and Gita, these beautiful filmmakers, who's a husband and wife team, made it into a script. And I shot it with Kirby Howell Baptiste, who's one of my favorite actresses ever. This is project number five with her, and I will continue to work with her. So it was really fun. Um, it's got Paul Walker Hauser, Vince Vaughn, and it's just a really fun queen pins comedy about these girls trying to evade the law and uh, make some money. And I had so much fun doing it. 
And, and, and Dax, you know, one of the, the, the great pleasures of technology are these podcasts. And your podcast, we, you know, time in and time out, uh, is really, it's like this whole other version of you, yet it is you. Uh, do, are, you are you surprised at how, how much people love this podcast? I mean, it really is something that it seems like maybe you did on a lark, but my gosh, it is terrific. Um, thank you so much. It's a humongous surprise. My, the trajectory of my working career has been work really hard for a couple of years and then have the movie come out on Friday and then want to die on Saturday. So that's <laughs> my, my work reward uh, muscle memory is a little, a little skewed. And, and, uh, so yeah, to do something that I worked less hard on and that was really successful is very um, disorienting. I don't know. But I will say, I, I think any credit that I could take, I would just have to give to AA because I think my original goal in the podcast was like, oh, I get to go to these meetings every week. It's all men. They're sharing openly. They're admitting their 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 character defects, the ways they've erred and what they've learned from it. And I'm picking up all this stuff and the level of vulnerability and honesty and support is so unique. Why doesn't everyone get to experience this? Why does one have to go be an alcoholic to, to have this peer experience? And so that was kind of the, the, the North Star of the podcast. It's like, oh, what if we could do this in public? What if I could, I could start first and go like, oh, yeah, all these things happened to me. And this is how I did it. And I messed up this way. And, and get the ball rolling that way instead of like, how'd you win that Oscar? Boy, you were great. Like, I think there's some other conversation to be had that, um, is not unique to AA, but it was seemingly unique to the podcast space. So I, I think that's why. Well, I, I think the honesty of it and the, the just almost, I, I, and I don't mean this in a negative, but the rawness of it uh, is something that we're just not used to in, you know, in, in uh, uh, pop, you know, our pop social world right now. I try, I, I try when I'm feeling very lofty about myself, I think of it as, as a bit of an antidote to 140 characters, a curated life of pictures on Instagram, all these things that are snapshots. I'm much more interested in like the whole thing and not, not the, the time I have that you got the angle where I actually look like my nose is, is, is average size. Like that's not what we're after. <laughs> Well, uh, it, it, it succeeds, my friend, and to, bo to both of you. And, and before we go, I, I, I circle back to Family Game Fight. Um, what was it like? I mean, did you enjoy working together? More than ever on this one. Um, we just, in general, enjoy working together because, and we've said this before, so I sound a little inauthentic, but in life, Every day, there's nine options for us to disagree. We don't have a common goal. We don't want to eat at the same place. We aren't on the mood to watch the same TV show. We don't have the same opinion on what we should do with the kids as parents. It's just a nonstop waterfall of compromise. When we work together, it's this rare bubble where we have the exact same goal. Like, we want the show to be great. And then even more than that, I... It's rare, I think, for partners in a marriage to be the benefactor of their partner's genius. So if I'm out on stage in this game show, it's on my shoulders and it's on hers. And she she is like she's John Stockton and I'm Malone or vice versa. Or she's you know, I'm Pittman. She's George. like I look at her and I go, oh, my God, she's going to do more than half the lifting, maybe even more than half the lifting. She's so good at this. Watch her go. Oh my God, I feel uh, safe in like my teammate. It's just a rare thing, I think, to get to experience in a marriage. I wow. suck up. No, it was beautiful. But yeah, he's also said before, you don't get to go to work with your partner and see them thrive. If, you're, if your partner is an accountant, you don't get to go to work and see them do a spreadsheet smash or add numbers. Yes, yeah, smash a spreadsheet. <laughs> But we get to go to work and see each other be a sort of our in our element, be our best. And it's also the safety net as an actor to have someone you trust so much next to you. So having a common goal <clears throat> mitigates any sort of arguments that could happen or compromises because we're just on track with a common goal. And that's something really beautiful. And we always 
come home feeling very grateful for each other. Yeah, some people go away to like uh, <laughs> nice hotels for a week to rekindle, and we we go shoot for ninety hours, and we come out thinking like, yeah, I picked the right one, and you get paid. That's right. That's right. Oh, guys, okay. Doji Doji coin, which we regret. Oh well, you know that's. But it's a cute little dog. So. It is. That's, I think that's what got us. <laughs> Gets everybody. <laughs> Guys, thanks so much. It's great to see you. Thank, Thank you, Al. You. A lot of fun. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Well, hello, everybody. It's time for another fun-filled edition of Popstar Plus. Thanks for being here. Today, we're going to catch up with our good buddy, Valerie Bertinelli, who's going to give us the inside scoop on her new book. Plus, we're going to dig into the vault to celebrate the birthday of a Hollywood legend. But first, let's check out today's Popstar. We're going to start with Betty White. What a great way to stop Popstar today to honor what would have been the Hollywood icon's 100th birthday on Monday. Her former assistant shared one of the last photos taken of Betty. Look at that picture, that's great. Before her passing in December, seen here smiling in the snapshot from December 20th, and her assistant Kirsten writing in the caption, she was radiant and beautiful and happy as ever. Thanks to all of you who are doing kind things today and every day to make the world a better place. And it's true because yesterday was an impressive day for fans who set out to do good in honor of Betty's centennial birthday. Animal shelters around the country reporting an influx in donations thanks to that hashtag Betty White challenge that was circulating social media. Just one more way that Betty left such a positive impact on the world. Next up, Law & Order. This is a full circle mo moment for one young actor whose childhood dream came true by landing a gig on the most recent episode of SVU. Let's start at the beginning. Back in November, 13 Reasons Why star Christian Navarro shared on Instagram that when he was just nine years old, he got a chance to meet the cast of one of his favorite shows. They were shooting an episode in his hometown of Hunts Point, New York. So now 15 years later, he's made it into season 23 of the hit NBC series, and he was guest starring in Thursday's episode. Navarro writing on Instagram, dream come true to go toe to toe with Mirshka Hargitay and Ice T. If that's not a sign of how long this show has been on TV, <laughs> I don't know what is. It will never end. All right, we that's hope. a good thing. Yeah, finally, Sports Illustrated, we've got an exclusive first look at the magazine's February issue, which previews the Beijing Winter Olympics. The upcoming edition has not one, but four special covers featuring female athletes from Team USA, including Alpine skier Michaela Schiffer, and of course, cross-country skier Jesse Diggins, speed skater Aaron Jackson, and ice hockey player Abby Rock. You can check out more of these amazing athletes on the Sports Illustrated website. That is issue uh, is out on Thursday and that is your pop star and here's why the show's called pop star plus even more headlines we'll start with Will Smith check out how the actor and his mom celebrated her big birthday this week Yep, that's Will and his mother, Caroline Bright, and check out those moves. Not Will's, mom's, those are great. And happy birthday, not bad, for 85 years young. Good stuff. Coming up next, we've got Serena Williams, the tennis superstar known for twinning with her four-year-old daughter, might actually have a mini-me in the making. Check out this video of little Olympia working on her backhand. Look at that stroke. I mean, that's flawless. That's impressive. Then you got Aunt Venus jumping in on the comments section. She writes, it's Aura Scene all over again. Of course, referencing the famous tennis sister's mother and coach, Orsine Price. Who knows? Maybe Serena might be serving up the next great tennis star. And for those of you who are looking for more pop start headlines, we've got a lot more coming up today. We're going to chat with our good buddy, Valerie Bertinelli. Stay tuned for that. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. All right, it just did too. 
Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcast. And welcome back. Thanks for checking out Popstar Plus. We appreciate it. Valerie Bertinelli is getting very real in her new memoir, Enough Already, Learning to Love the Way I Am Today. And she joined us to tell us all about it. Valerie Bertinelli is beloved by so many. She's loved because of her recipes. She's loved because she's so open and honest about the successes and the struggles in her life. And you can find both of them in her new book. It's a beautiful title. It's called Enough Already, Learning to Love the Way I Am Today. We're going to talk with Valerie in just a second. But first, a look at why we love her so much. So in a caprese salad, is fresh vine ripe tomatoes. She is as comfortable teaching us how to cook with her approachable recipes as she is starring in sitcoms that first put her in the limelight. Get in there, you. Audiences fell in love with Valerie Bertinelli when she was just 15 years old playing Barbara Cooper on One Day at a Time. I'm the only kid I know who goes to confession and has to make up sins. <laughs> her life has been in the public eye ever since. From her years married to rock star Eddie Van Halen and the birth of their son Wolfie to co-starring with the late Betty White on the hit show Hot in Cleveland. Her battle with weight became part of her journey, dating back to her days as the face of Jenny Craig. But it is the inner struggles about the pressures of weight and self-image that Valerie has found comfort in sharing, opening up with us here on Today. I have to learn how to love myself today as is. That emotional roller coaster has been part of her road to healing. I'm standing out in the rain. Because mm. I'm doing my best to distract my mind from spiraling to a place of self-loathing because I saw a picture of myself today that made me want to do that. Now, in her new memoir, Enough Already, Learning to Love the Way I Am Today, the 61-year-old gives an honest and raw account of her path to acceptance and openness. Valerie's truth includes openness about the recent separation from her second husband. And for the first time, she shares the deeply personal final moments with Eddie Van Halen, who remained a central part of her life until his death in 2020. I knew the man for 40 years. I was 20 when I met him. I still loved him. Uh, we spent a lot of time together. He He's the father of my son. He's the father of the greatest gift in my life. And I miss him, I, and I'm allowed to miss him. As she continues to work on her own mental and physical well-being, Valerie feels blessed, trying not to dwell on the negative while giving herself permission to feel joy. Remember to be grateful, and I am grateful, even through all the mess, because there's still good in all the mess. Oh, there is good and all the mess. We're so delighted to have Valerie with us. Hi, Valerie. How are you? Hi, Hoda. Well, I wasn't planning on crying this morning. <laughs> I know. You know what? I wasn't planning on starting with this part of the book, but I was watching you watch it, and so I feel like I have to. Um, <laughs> you found your soulmate in Eddie Van Halen, Ed, and saying goodbye to a soulmate has to be among the most wrenching things in the world to do. And then mm -hmm. you put it right there on the pages, not just your loss, but your son's. Tell me about that. I, I, when, I, when I wrote it and when I did it, it was very cathartic to go through it. I didn't intend to write a book um, that had a lot of grief in it. Um, it was about joy. And um, if I left that par part out, it wouldn't, it wouldn't show you the path to joy and, and how to find that even through the depths of um, the biggest grief you can feel. And I know a lot of people have been feeling that across the country and across around the world. You know, we've all dealt with a lot of grief in the last couple of years. So um, at first it was very, um, it felt very raw and um, vulnerable to write about it, but I thought, 
it was true. It was real. And it was something that I wanted to express about love and how love is just so important to remember, even when you're going through all of the pain. And to have found a soulmate. People go their whole lives, Valerie, and don't find that. They go to their grave and they don't find it. You had it. I know, but you know what? I don't think, um, I think soulmates, I think we have more than just one. I think mm -hmm. that, um, I feel like partly Wolfie is, is a soulmate of mine. Mm -hmm. I think when I think of soulmate, I think of souls that come here to experience this life on earth together again and to get through and get to a higher place. Mm -hmm. So um, I definitely, definitely know that was part of Ed. I loved his soul deeply. <laughs> and um, we went through a lot of hell as well. I mean, we weren't really good to each other at a lot of a lot of points in our lives because we met so young and, and we were very immature. But I'm, I'm so happy that we were able to come to a beautiful place by the mm -hmm. end of his life. And um, I just, I wish he was still here. <laughs> oh, Valerie, this is a big book. It's about so many mm -hmm. things. It's about, we, get, we got to watch you evolve. We got to watch you. I got to watch you. I feel like firsthand. It started and, with you. <laughs> uh, I'm so touched. But I have to say, I feel like we have a lot in common because we both come from pleasing. How can I make you feel mm -hmm. better? I'll twist myself into a pretzel so you'll feel better. I want to make sure mm -hmm. I'll put a circle in a square so you'll feel better. But you were managing to crack that nut, and that's not an easy one to crack. How did you? Uh, because you can't make another person feel better if you're coming from a broken place. I mean, we all come from broken places. Life is not easy. And um, I think that when you can still step through that and, and look at the gratitude that, it, mm -hmm. that you can see in your life, there is so much to be grateful for, even in the depths of the mess <laughs> because it can be messy um it's just about switching your mind to focus on the positive and uh -huh. focus on the gifts that you have in your life and we all have them and it's about telling the truth like speaking it out loud and i didn't know when i was interviewing you back then that you were going through what would be what would later or be, prove to be the end of your your current marriage mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. to say it out loud it kind of pushes you into a place because uh, I'm a big old procrastinator. I like to put things off until the last minute. So I think and I also want to be um, gentle and caring and not just rip off a bandaid. I like to pull mm -hmm. it off gently. But I think there is definitely um, power mm -hmm. and, and peace in changing your narrative and changing the way that you can look at your life. I know it is for me when I changed the way I looked at my life and stopped beating myself up most of the time <laughs> it still it reaches in there but uh, um there is power in that and peace this book by the way and i'm holding it in my hand because i love it so much it's full of life lessons they pop out on every single page anyone who's going through a difficult time if you pick this book up i know that you'll feel like a warm hand on your heart and before i say goodbye to you valerie and well of course i'll visit with you again later on the 10 um you had a chance to work with betty white most people mm. knew her but never felt her the way you did just a couple of words about betty before we say goodbye I, she was magical that's i mean there's no other way to explain that that lovely woman and she is the one that taught me so much about gratitude betty walked in gratitude and and she was grateful for every moment of her life for every thing that happened to her and she was just i can't i say this all the time because it's so true and anybody that knew her knew this she glowed she was otherworldly she she was an angel here on earth for wow. sure and i'm actually as sad as i am that we don't get to be with her any longer i am so happy she's with alan right now mm. Oh, what a beautiful sentiment. Valerie, we're going to talk more in our fourth hour, but this book, Enough Already, is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful read. Thank you so much, and thanks for Thank being you, open. Uh, and it's out today, so please pick it up. Love Valerie. She's family around here. We've got more Val coming up in just a minute. Her quoted by Conversation with Hoda. We'll have it next on Popstar Plus. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it, I know that it can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson now.
Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. People really don't know what's going to happen. Only a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. All right, it just did too. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? week-long journey across America from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital you rarely see. It's your last movie. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. And we're back on Popstar Plus with more from Chef, TV host, and our good friend Valerie Bertinelli. Now, in this episode of Quoted By, she talks with Hoda about finding joy within herself. <laughs> One of America's favorite people, and right mostly here. one of mine, <laughs> Valerie Bertinelli is here. And I always feel like you live your life with a good kind of inner compass. When we brought this up, when we, I wondered, I said to myself, like, what quote is Valerie going to choose? It was hard. Yeah? It was really uh -huh. hard because there's so many amazing quotes out there mm -hmm. that are inspirational. But I always go back to Dr. Seuss. Oh, I like that. And I absolutely love, mm -hmm. I mean, he's been inspiring me since I was a very young girl. It was the very first book that my father would read to me, mm. uh, all of the Dr. Seuss books. And one quote always, always stood out of his mm -hmm. because it was my father who was always telling me, you have to make sure everybody likes you. You mm -hmm. have to, you know. And as you get older, you realize that's scientifically impossible mm -hmm. to have everybody like you. So be who you are mm -hmm. and say how you feel mm -hmm. because those who mind don't matter mm -hmm. and those who matter don't, don't mind. mind. <laughs> That's good. So as long as I start to yeah, really com continue to remember that all the people that love me for who I am, mm -hmm. I don't have to be pretend to be anybody because I can't make somebody like me no matter how, how hard I pretend to be something that I think they may like. Mm -hmm. So isn't it just easier just to be myself be and those who love me will love me for who I am. Now how long, because that's a lesson, like you said, you were told that by your parents. And I think a lot of us were. Be mm -hmm. nice. Everyone's mm -hmm. going to like you. You mm -hmm. want to be popular. Be nice. Mm -hmm. At what stage did you actually learn this lesson? What time is it? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a gradual kind of process, and it's something that doesn't come easily mm -hmm. when it's been ingrained in my brain yes. to make sure that you treat. And I still believe in treating everybody with kindness, no matter how they feel about me. I'll still right. treat them with kindness. Right. But um, it's really starting to resonate more as I'm going on this journey of 2020 of finding myself and finding my mm -hmm. joy that the, the right people... And I have so many beautiful people around me that already love me for who I am. Mm -hmm. You know, the crazy Valerie, the loud Valerie, you know, the, uh, the, the anything Valerie. Because they also see my heart and see my intentions. And I think um, those are the people I want to keep around me the most. I think by you doing this and even talking about this particular quote, because um, this one this one resonates with, with me too. And I was trying to figure out, like, how do I stop caring if someone doesn't like me? Have you figured that out or does it still deep down inside you give you an ouch? I care less. Yeah. Um, because when I, when I, and it, it's a really good practice seeing what trolls will say about you huh. online. Um, mm -hmm. Just recently someone was, you know, calling me chubby online. Yeah. And um, that could sting, but I think it has more to do with someone wanting to be seen, be heard. Yeah. And if they do that, if they say this about me, then someone will notice them. So yeah. it made me feel compassion for that person. Wow. And I can bless them and go, yeah, I'm chubby, but it's not a bad thing. It's not wow. a bad thing. And I'm, I'm sorry that you're feeling so much pain. So God bless you. Oh, it's always great to hear from Valerie. We love her. Again, check out her book. It's out. It's called Enough Already. And it is fantastic. Now we have a bonus quoted by because Hoda also sat down with R&B legend Miss Mary J. Blige. 
All right, this is one of my favorite segments. It's called Quoted By, and I'm with one of my favorite people who I find incredibly inspiring. If you know anything about Mary J. Blige's life, you know about overcoming, you know about persevering, and you also know about just finding out who you are. So I am so happy to be sitting here with you because because I just am. And I just wondered, do you have like a guiding light, Mary J., a quote that speaks to you? Yes, um, it's a quote that was given to me by one of my favorite artists when I first met her, the Shaka Khan, and she told me that I needed to get out of my own way. And I, and I think she was speaking vocally as well. She said, once you learn how to do that, you're gonna be able to do anything. And later on in life, it didn't really click what she was saying until I started seeing how I was doubting myself in everything and second guessing myself in everything. And that's me jumping in my own way instead of trusting everything that I am. Oh, that was, whew, gave myself the chills. <laughs> trusting everything that I am because everything I am is what I am and I can only give you me. So if I gotta stop doubting me, I can only give you the greatness of me. Do you ever think like, one thing I think people struggle with too is, I, I read a quote, I mean a quote, I loved it. It says, you're the sum total of the five people you spend the most time with, so choose wisely. Yes. Did you have to kind of unload or say goodbye to people in your life to kind of clear your path? And how hard was that? Listen, environment is everything. So in order to grow, you have to change your environment. If you, in order to get something new, you have to see something new. Mm. If my environment didn't change when I was living in Yonkers in the projects, if I didn't see something else, I had girlfriends that took me out of the projects and I experienced Benzes and, and jewelry and, and furs and condos and houses and I saw something else. So that made me want something else. So the environment is extremely important and, and you're gonna shed people, shed people. And it's gonna be a little sad, but they have to go. When things start to stall, Someone has to get off the boat or get off the bus. Everyone's not going. It's too heavy. You know, when the bus stops, somebody has to get off. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. So, yes. In, in <laughs> yes, because you can only carry so many people. You're right. You're absolutely right. And do you, uh, lastly, Mary G, have any advice for people who are, some people are feeling um, either alone or their problems are getting magnified just because of the current environment that we're living in. What advice would you have for them? First of all, loneliness is hard. If you're by yourself at this moment, take this time to get to know you. Take this time to absorb you, to embrace you, to talk to you. You know, people say you're crazy when they say talk to you, you know, talk to yourself, but talk to yourself, love yourself, greet yourself in the morning, take a bath, you know, <laughs> do something, give yourself a natural oatmeal facial, whatever you do, but use the time instead of having a woe is me moment and lift yourself up mm. and be patient in the moment you know because I think sometimes we end up by ourselves because things have to be fixed in order for people to come the right mm. people to come around you, you understand I think I heard about 10 quotes in there that I want to steal and take as if they were my own okay <laughs> Mary J you are so full of inspiration. Thank you for doing our Quote Advice series. Good luck with Thank all you. with your new music. Uh, you're gonna come back to see us hopefully in Studio 1A soon, as soon as the lights turn back on. Um, and we miss you. Oh, love Mary J. She's the best. Wise words from a true music icon. Coming up, we're heading into the Today Show vault to celebrate Kevin Costner's birthday. We began our Cross America journey tonight. St. Louis, Austin. Here in Nashville. From Washington, D.C. The side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! 
exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcast. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? And we're back on Popstar Plus. You know, for more than three decades, Kevin Costner has been one of the biggest names in Hollywood. And to mark the star's 67th birthday today, we've got a clip from the vault when he stopped by to talk about a oh, classic movie, The Untouchables. This is back in 1987. Kevin Costner was the loony Jake in Silverado. He was dead in the big chill before the movie even began. He is one of the few new stars Hollywood is counting on with very high hopes. And now he is ready with the lavish new gangster movie, The Untouchables, in which he is the famous treasury agent who went after Al Capone, Elliot Ness. Good morning, Elliot. Good morning, Kevin. One and the same in this movie, which I mean as a compliment. This Elliot Ness is different from the perception of him I had before I saw the movie. He's sort of innocent. He's sort of uh, dopey almost at the beginning. Yeah. Like he's in over his head. Uh, yeah, I think that's what David uh, Mamet, who wrote the script, had in mind. I think one thing uh, that he did was he chose to ignore the expectations people have of Elliot Ness. That was a tough one to swallow for me because I was very fond of this series, but I think in doing so, he created an original movie. The truth of the case is that the man Capone is a killer and he will go free. There is only one way to deal with such men and that is hunt them down. I have. I have forsworn myself. I have broken every law I swore to defend. I have become what I beheld and I am content that I have done right. Now that man must be stopped and you must... I'll be the judge of what I must do, Mr. Ness. It's an untraditional movie in a sense that uh, I think Elliot's probably the hardest character to embrace. I think he is. He must be very hard for you. How'd you get a handle on him? I, well, I just chose to just stand like the guys did a long time ago and just say the lines, you know? Just, just stand and deliver. Uh, I didn't write this, this script. I believed in it. Uh, there were problems that I had because I thought, you know, where's the, where's the toughness? But you know what? It does. It comes out of, uh, it comes out of honesty, his toughness. Well, one of the good things about your character, of course, is that he grows. He changes in the movie. It's not one of these movies where the guy's the same for two hours and right. you go home, you know? Right. And one of the reasons this character changes is because Sean Connery, who plays a cop who is on your side, sort of you really teaches you and, and makes you change. You see what I'm saying? What are you prepared to do? Everything within the law. And then what are you prepared to do? If you open the ball on these people, Mr. Nash, you must be prepared to go all the way. Because they won't give up the fight until one of you is dead. I want to get Capone. I don't know how to get him. Sean Connery is, is a, a great character who does teach me the ropes. Americans seem to have a, a split personality about gangsters. In one way, they know they're supposed to not like these guys. On the other hand, they're absorbed. Right. They love to see gangsters. Capone is almost a hero. He was a right. loathsome creep. I mean, who killed people? He was. Blew up children, and yet everybody wanted to invite him to the party, you know? Right. What is the attraction of gangsters to the American public? Well, they, they usually dress better than <laughs> most of us. And in our picture, they look fabulous. They look fabulous. I mean, we're in Armani clothes, and they said, the good news is the gangsters look fabulous, and the bad news is you're in grays. <laughs> but ultimately, I'm really happy I was in this movie. I, I saw it the other night, and... Uh, and I was uh, very pleased with the fact that it is a, it's worth six bucks, you know? It's all on the screen. All yeah. the money they spent on that movie is up there for you to see. Yeah, it is. You were in the big chill, except you were not in the big chill. Right. First of all, your character's dead to begin with, right. but then there was a big flashback scene, yeah. and it was on a cutting room floor, so we never see you on screen in a big chill, and yet everybody's telling me that the big break that Kevin Costner had was he was or was not in the big chill. Explain that to me. Well, I, I think that uh, there's certain kind of movies you want to be in in your career, and there's certain kind of people you want to work with. And the, I think the great directors and the great actors, they, they look, look to each other's films, and they want to know who was in them by association. But the fact that you weren't on screen, it's still an important credit for you. 
I, 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 it is. I, I mean, I'm kind of romantic about film and, and, and film lore, and I feel like uh, I'm, I'm part of that. I, I haven't turned up on a Trivial Pursuit question yet, but I, uh, th uh, there's a special place for me being in the Big Chill, uh, being even considered, you know, in that situation. There's going to be a big hit to picture you're in now. The Untouchables. I, it reminded me of a, of, a, of, a, of a movie I wait for, and then I go in, and it doesn't disappoint. Thank you very, very much for being with us. Thank you. What a great movie, The Untouchables. And again, we want to wish a very happy birthday to Mr. Kevin Costner. And if you're not watching Yellowstone on Paramount+, Plus, that's a great one, too. That's going to wrap up today's Popstar Plus. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. Hope you have a great day. So long. Oh, look, it's the Today All Day Nation. Get your terrible towels out. Happy Tuesday, you guys. Hope you had a great long weekend. Oh, God, you're okay. I've never heard that one before. Welcome to Today in 30. It's our digital show. We bring you everything you love about today, but we just we shrink it down to a bite-sized portion. It's so delicious. We'll start, though, with this uh, new warning from Nation's Airlines over tomorrow's arrival of that new 5G cell service. They say it could cause catastrophic disruptions Flight cancellations, delays, the whole nine yards. Tom Costello is going to break it all down for us. And then, guys, we caught up with our dear friend Valerie Bertinelli. She's got a powerful new memoir out. It's called Enough Already. And you don't want to miss our inspiring conversation on life, love, loss, and how Valerie's learned to find joy in all aspects of her life. And then on the fourth hour, Hoda and Jenna got to hang with everyone's favorite comedian and curmudgeon, Ricky Gervais, sharing a new look at the season of his Netflix show, The New Season, Afterlife. And then bonding with Jenna over their love of cats. You know, just another thing those two have in common. Let's just say we got I mean, lots of laughs. We're going to get started. It is time for Today in 30. NBC's Tom Costello has been on this story for months now. Tom, good morning. They're used to very dramatic language in that letter, didn't they? Yeah, they really did. The airline and cargo carrier CEOs are warning of, quote, economic calamity and catastrophic, disrupt catastrophic disruptions if the 5G rollout goes forward around the nation's airports. The entire aviation industry is very concerned that 5G will disrupt critical cockpit systems. United Airlines this morning is warning it could negatively affect one and a quarter million United passengers, at least 15,000 flights, tons of cargo. The cell phone companies insist all of the research says 5 5G is safe. It is all set to go live at midnight. 50, 40, 30. It's the critical technology pilots rely on for precise altitude readings when landing and poor visibility, the radio altimeter. But the FAA, the airlines, pilots, Boeing and Airbus have all warned the new faster 5G cell systems could interfere with the altimeter just when pilots need it most. Now with the system going live tomorrow, the airline CEOs have written this letter asking that the 5G sites within two miles of airports remain turned off for now warning that immediate intervention is needed to avoid significant operational disruption to air passengers, shippers, supply chain, and delivery of needed medical supplies. The FAA is uncomfortable with the safety risk, and as a consequence, the impact on our operations to mitigate that would be a significant setback. Concerned about potential interference, the FAA has already issued a notice to pilots. As 5G goes live Wednesday, the FAA will prohibit pilots from using altimeters during landing at more than 80 airports near 5G sites, including large airport hubs in Dallas, New York, Chicago, and Seattle. If those airports experience bad weather, the CEOs warn, the vast majority of the traveling and shipping public will essentially be grounded facing cancellations, diversions, or delays. This is reckless, it's dangerous, and it's got to stop. Take a pause. This is about a cell phone signal, and we're focused on protecting lives. But the cell phone industry insists there is no 5G risk to planes. Recently telling NBC News, 5G networks operate safely without interference in nearly 40 countries around the world, and it will be no different here. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg. Look, the wireless carriers are impatient to deploy technology that uh, stands to make a big impact, a positive impact on our economy. Uh, but on the aviation side, we've also got to make sure that it's safe. 
Tom, I'm picturing people with their bags packed, getting ready to head to the airports in the next couple of days. So how many flights could be delayed or canceled if this thing rolls out tomorrow? Well, you heard the United warning. Uh, airlines in general say they could be forced to ground large numbers of planes because they're not yet certified to operate around 5G sites. And government aviation sources say as the system goes live tomorrow, we could see mass cancellations at airports where weather moves in. Potentially already thousands of flights on the West Coast tomorrow. Some airlines already staffing command centers to address urgent pilot issues. The FAA has released a statement. It says the FAA continues to work with the aviation industry and wireless companies to try to limit 5G-related flight delays and cancellations. Clearly, Hoda, the pressure right now is on the White House and the FAA and the FCC to address this immediately today. Indeed. All right, Tom Costello for us. Tom, thank you. Today show's newest fan. A little Al Roker. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back. Our friend Valerie Bertinelli is beloved by so many. She's loved because of her recipes. She's loved because she's so open and honest about the successes and the struggles in her life. And you can find both of them in her new book. It's a beautiful title. It's called Enough Already, Learning to Love the Way I Am Today. We're so delighted to have Valerie with us. Hi, Valerie. How are you? Hi, Hoda. Well, I wasn't planning on crying this morning. <laughs> I know. You know what? I wasn't planning on starting with this part of the book, but I was watching you watch it, and so I feel like I have to. Um, <laughs> you found your soulmate in Eddie Van Halen, Ed, and saying goodbye to a soulmate has to be among the most wrenching things in the world to do. And then mm -hmm. you put it right there on the pages, not just your loss, but your son's. Tell me about that. I, I, when I, when I wrote it and when I did it, it was very cathartic to go through it. I didn't intend to write a book um, that had a lot of grief in it. Um, it was about joy. And um, if I left that par part out, it wouldn't, it wouldn't show you the path to joy and, and how to find that even through the depths of um, the biggest grief you can feel. And I know a lot of people have been feeling that across the country and across around the world. You know, we've all dealt with a lot of grief in the last couple of years. So, um, at first it was very um it felt very raw and um vulnerable to write about it but i thought it was true it was real and it was something that i wanted to express about love and how love is just so important to remember even when you're going through all of the pain and to have found a soulmate People go their whole lives, Valerie, and don't find that. They go to their grave and they don't find it. You had it. I know, but you know what? I don't think, um, I think soulmates, I think we have more than just one. I think mm -hmm. that, um, I feel like partly Wolfie is, is a soulmate of mine. Mm -hmm. I think when I think of soulmate, I think of souls that come here to experience this life on earth together again and to get through and get to a higher place. Mm -hmm. So um, I definitely, definitely know that was part of Ed. I loved his soul deeply. <laughs> and um, we went through a lot of hell as well. I mean, we weren't really good to each other at a lot of a lot of points in our lives because we met so young and, and we were very immature. But I'm, I'm 
so happy that we were able to come to a beautiful place by the mm -hmm. end of his life. And um, I just, I wish he was still here. <laughs> oh, Valerie, this is a big book. It's about so many mm -hmm. things. It's about, we, get, we got to watch you evolve. We got to watch you. I got to watch you. I feel like firsthand. It started and, with you. <laughs> oh, I'm so touched. But I have to say, I feel like we have a lot in common because we both come from pleasing. How can I make you feel mm -hmm. better? I'll twist myself into a pretzel so you'll feel better. I want to make sure mm -hmm. I'll put a circle in a square so you'll feel better. But you were managing to crack that nut, and that's not an easy one to crack. How did you? Uh, because you can't make another person feel better if you're coming from a broken place. I mean, we all come from broken places. Life is not easy. And um, I think that when you can still step through that and, and look at the gratitude that, it, mm -hmm. that you can see in your life, there is so much to be grateful for, even in the depths of the mess <laughs> because it can be messy um it's just about switching your mind to focus on the positive and uh -huh. focus on the gifts that you have in your life and we all have them and it's about telling the truth like speaking it out loud and i didn't know when i was interviewing you back then that you were going through what would be what would later or be, prove to be the end of your your current marriage mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. to say it out loud it kind of pushes you into a place because uh, I'm a big old procrastinator. I like to put things off until the last minute. So I think and I also want to be um, gentle and caring and not just rip off a bandaid. I like to pull mm -hmm. it off gently. But I think there is definitely um, power mm -hmm. and, and peace in changing your narrative and changing the way that you can look at your life. I know it is for me when I changed the way I looked at my life and stopped beating myself up most of the time <laughs> it still it reaches in there but uh, um there is power in that and peace this book by the way and i'm holding it in my hand because i love it so much it's full of life lessons they pop out on every single page anyone who's going through a difficult time if you pick this book up i know that you'll feel like a warm hand on your heart and before i say goodbye to you valerie and well of course i'll visit with you again later on the 10 um you had a chance to work with betty white most people mm. knew her but never felt her the way you did just a couple of words about betty before we say goodbye I, she was magical that's i mean there's no other way to explain that that lovely woman and she is the one that taught me so much about gratitude betty walked in gratitude and and she was grateful for every moment of her life for every thing that happened to her and she was just i can't i say this all the time because it's so true and anybody that knew her knew this she glowed she was otherworldly she she was an angel here on earth for wow. sure and i'm actually as sad as i am that we don't get to be with her any longer i am so happy she's with alan right now mm. Oh, what a beautiful sentiment. This book, Enough Already, is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful read. Thank you so much. And thanks for Thank being you, open. Uh, and it's out today, so please pick it up. Uh, it is. Thank you, Hoda. You're I'll welcome, see you honey. See you soon. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. All right, it is the These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it, I know that it can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at five on NBC News Now. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? Yeah, five, seven, four, three.
there is some late breaking news for our horses in the Iowa caucuses. Find the man who All right, it just did too. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. This morning on Today Food, a warm, hearty soup that's perfect for a cold winter day. Here with one of her family's favorites is cooking show host and internet star Laura Fatale of YouTube's Laura in the Kitchen. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, ladies. How are you? We're doing great. Can I tell you a true story? So this morning Hi. when I was prepping for your segment, I read over the recipe and I was like, you know what? This is doable. So I took the notes from my desk this morning and put them in my bag Ooh. so that I can make this yeah. today. So here we go. So there's nothing better, obviously, enjoying soup. Let's talk about what you're making today because it's more than a soup. It's like a comfort dish. So I love the idea of like a ravioli dinner or a lasagna dinner, which, you know, it's a very rich, long cooking process that's just so soul satisfying, right? However, I find myself wanting those comfort dishes on a Tuesday evening where like time and patience is short. Um, and I really want something that's quick, easy, that my whole family is going to love because I have a very picky four-year-old um, that just that hits the spot. So this mini ravioli soup really came, the idea for it really came from a bag of mini ravioli that I got from Trader Joe's. And mm -hmm. I thought, oh, they would be fantastic in a really savory sausage infused tomato broth situation. Mm. And that's kind of where the recipe came from. But it's also incredibly versatile. Like today, I'm going to be using pork sausage that I, all I did was in the, for this instance, I went ahead and just crumbled it with my carrots and my celery. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add my onions to it. You can also just slice it in little coins. A good tip there is to put your sausage in the freezer for about 10 minutes before you slice it because it's just a fatty cut of meat, so it's hard to get a nice clean cut. Uh, but you can just crumble it. If you don't like sausage but your family prefers meatballs, add some frozen mini meatballs to this. No one's going to judge. Right. Um, okay. If you're like my sister who once in a while she decides she's a vegetarian, That's that's us. Add a can of chicken. That's what I was going to do. I was going to do chicken. Yeah, my I was going to do chickpeas. Impossible Burger. Yep, yep. Okay. Yeah, well, you could do the Impossible Burger crumbled up in here. And yep. That would be fantastic. Or like I said, a can of chickpeas. Yep. And then all I do is I just saute that with your usual aromatic suspects that go in any soup or stew. You've got carrots. You've got onion. You've got celery. Okay. To it, I want to add a lot of garlic. Because oh, again, garlic. when we're talking about something that is quick cooking, easy to put together, you really want to hone in on really strong, bold flavors. So again, lots of garlic, lots of onions, and then it always makes everything taste like you waste, you spent so much more time yeah. um, on it than you really did. Laura, you know what, what do you mean? do? What do you do with the broth? Because I, we wanted to do chickpeas, that version, but I know she used beef mm -hmm. broth. Do we still use the broth? You know what I mean? Or what you do we do? You can use vegetable broth. You can use vegetable broth if you if you're not a vegetarian, you can also use chicken broth if you are going to use chickpeas. But really, I really love getting, um, whenever, every time I come to the city, I will make a pit stop at Italy because they have the most fantastic Italian uh, vegetable broth cubes, Ooh. you know? So they're like bouillon cubes, but they're vegetarian and they are so packed with flavor and low sodium. Yeah. I love them. And sometimes I'll just boil that for my daughter with a little bit of pastina and some chicken and she loves it. Sounds and amazing. lots of parm. So I like to keep it as easy as possible, especially when it's just, you know, it's cold, it's miserable, and yep. you're working <laughs> from home, and you have the kids. Right, and, and you want it quick. Who was no, that? <laughs> How long do you let it simmer for, and what is that that you're cutting? So what I'm cutting off right now is the rind of some Parmesan, right? Mm. So oh. the rind has incredible flavor, and all I'm going to do, now that I'm going to add my tomato sauce and my beef stock, I'm going to add this alongside so that it infuses all of my soup with this lovely, salty, Parmesan Ooh. cheesy flavor that it is, it makes or breaks a soup for me. <laughs> um, it's my favorite. But once you have all of your aromatics and your sausage looking really good, I'm going to go ahead and add some tomato pots. I always have uh, marinara sauce on hand because, because I do. Sure. <laughs> um, 
because I don't think any Italian doesn't. So I just use a couple of cups of leftover marinara sauce, but this works great with like crushed tomatoes or open up a can of diced tomatoes. Um, it's really no fuss at all. And then you're gonna add your beef stock. Now, oh, if good. you're adding beef stock, chicken stock, whatever you're adding, just make sure it's a good quality. Because again, if you're using few ingredients in something that cooks kind of quickly, you just wanna make sure you're using the best quality ingredients you can. Then you take your Parmesan rind and you bury it in there. I like to go with a little Italian seasoning. If you don't have it, all it is is just some dried parsley. This looks basil. so, so amazing. Good. We're going to put the full recipe yeah. online, Laura. But And the good yeah. news is if you don't have ravioli and you just have pasta in your just closet, you could pasta. put that in too. So looks thank so you. Thank it's dinner you tonight. tonight. You I know. Go I'll, I'll keep you posted. Cooking. I'll post it. <laughs> If you don't have ravioli, you can go ahead and just use rice or pasta or anything like that. It doesn't have to be mini ravioli. Okay. It can be tortellini. It looks but amazing. Look, it looks that amazing. Boil, That's it. Once That's you come it. to we're, a boil, you just we're let running it out of time. Boil. Thank you so to much. We'll put everything go. online. It looks good. To get this recipe, go to today.com slash food. Thank you, Laura. We'll be right back. Today Show's newest fan. Little Al Roker. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd Cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. People really don't know what's going to happen. Really a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. By the man who never did. All right, it just made it. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd Cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd Cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. He's one of the funniest guys around. We love it when he stops by to talk to us. Yeah, actor, comedian, and fellow cat lover Ricky oh, Gervais. Yeah. His new <laughs> season of Afterlife is streaming right now on Netflix. Hi, Ricky. Hey, Ricky. Hi. How are you? How's it going? Oh, we're great. Hey, I don't know if you heard us, but before the break, we were talking about Orlando Bloom's yucky habit of leaving dental floss all <laughs> over the house. So we just wondered, what's, what's Jane's worst habit? Oh, um... Well, uh, she's oh. just handed me a cat, so I'm on live TV. So, Wait. Pickle, they wanted to see you. Pickle! They wanted to see you. Pickle, look. Pickalicious. Look. look. Pickalicious. Oh. Did you, wait, oh. oh, I think Pickalicious looks like you. You have the same Got eyes. Got my eyes. Yeah. yeah. Oh. oh. What a sweet Pickle, cat. look. You're on telly. Oh. You're on telly in America, Pickle. Wait, do you care oh, that, you? that now everybody will recognize your cat? Oh. They might put her in the tabloids? Oh, <laughs> yeah, we just uh, pixelated out. <laughs> yeah. Pixelated. Um, so, so wait, do, do you or your beautiful partner, Jane, whom we love so much, have, have any bad habits? Yeah, do you, you just totally dodge that by putting a yeah. cat in the picture. Uh, I, I don't think, I don't think uh, Jane does. Um, I'm, my, mine is probably, I'm too... I'm too generous, my own good. I'm just, I'm too perfect. That, that can annoy people, it's true. believe it or not. Well, one, one thing that we really like about Jane is that she's, she's good at keeping your perfection humble, yeah. you know? And she actually yes. posted this of your latest magazine cover. Yeah. This is a really beautiful shot of you. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you could believe her luck when she saw that. Wait, that's... Yeah. yeah, she just totally blocked you right out. I like how I'm always playing second fiddle to an animal. Yes, I'm exactly. either next to a beautiful dog and no one's looking at me, or I'm holding a beautiful cat and no one's looking at me. Good job I haven't got an ego, isn't it? <laughs>
<laughs> well, Ricky, I mean, you know that we've been hearing about the Oscars are in search of a host. Yes. And we know. Wait, please don't no, no, shake we your had an head. Idea. Why are you we shaking your head? We have a great idea. What it's about brilliant. you? Please. They never let me do what I wanted. I mean, that's why the Globes got me. They said I can write my own jokes and say what I want. No rehearsals. The Oscars would never. If the Oscars said that, right, then I'd do it. But that would never happen. So, so, uh, so you're be, saying I'd there's be a chance. Halfway so, through. Okay, so all they'd have to do is tell you no rehearsal. No, yeah. and you, you, you would choose your own jokes okay. and you would host yeah. if that were the case. Yeah, I'm already, I'm already regretting saying that just in case now. <laughs> Wait, we feel like there's a chance. Is there a chance? Under those circumstances, yeah. Okay, I mean, okay good. Yeah. We're going to call them. Uh, we, we have they, to... It won't happen. We have to talk about this beautiful show. Yes. It is, I think it's not what people are gonna expect from mm -hmm. you because, and I don't mean this in a mean way, but it has so much heart. It's about grief yeah. and love. Mm -hmm. and, and you wrote it um, at a time when I think we are all collectively grieving. Mm -hmm. So um, what has this show been to you? Um, well, it's been an amazing journey, really. It started off as a, the idea was a, you know, a comedy drama about a man who um, loses everything, which is the love of his life, and he doesn't want to go on living. And um, uh, the only thing that stops him killing himself is that the dog's hungry. Um, and it's about his journey. But the, the thing that came out of it is, um, after the first series went out, people would come up to me, like hundreds of people, and say, oh, um, I lost my sister a week before I watched it, or I lost my mother, or I lost my partner. And you suddenly realise, that everyone's grieving and they want to see that reflected yes. on TV. I was worried that people, can people laugh about this? Do people want to watch this, mm -hmm. this programme about sort of grief? Um, but they do. And I think we second guess the public too much. We, we go, oh, they can't take that. We better yeah. water it down a little bit. And they can take it because real life's worse. And I think a programme like this, when we see, you know, we, we confront the, the sadness and the funny side of things like grief, um, I think that's an inoculation against, mm -hmm. you know, real yes. life. And I think it makes you stronger. Yeah. I just think, you know, that uh, all these taboo subjects, that they stay taboo if we're scared of them, if we confront them. That's what humor's for, is to get us over bad stuff. That's yeah. what, that's, you know, everyone's life is, 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 is you know, braver if they've, they've got humor, if they can face the world. And I, yeah. Let's, why don't we watch just a little, a little clip of it, Ricky? Let's take a look. Funny, actually. That oh. really, wow. I disagree. <laughs> I disagree. You, wait, were you playing a journalist yes, there? Yes, you play a journalist. Yes, I play a local journalist, and, he, and he's trying to make himself feel better, so he tries everything, and the latest one is... Uh, uh, he, he tries. He tries fun, and um, mm. you know the the idea was that he tried to do what he wanted to, you know, because he didn't care anymore. But uh, like that that scene there is he's he's teasing his boss and brother in law, um, and it's so funny because that's the first take we did. <laughs> but I then did that scene another ten times just for my own amusement, <laughs> um, just because I enjoyed it so did, much. Did you learn anything about being a journalist from the, their gonna, many appearances maybe on Maybe from the Hoda, possibly from Hoda. Was she the inspiration? I think I'd be a bad journalist because um, th that, 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 yes, yeah, all journalists are an inspiration. It's funny because all journalists started off on those small yeah. local things, yeah. like the local radio or local uh, papers. And, and some of those stories are real that I, I remember, <laughs> you know, like um, man gets five birthday cards the same. And uh, the idea is that this guy doesn't want to do that trivial thing, but... It's those things that keep him alive because he has to deal with people, and you know, he's, it, it's just doing stuff that you know, distractions. Those things that might annoy you, they're the things that save your life in the end. And you've got to, you've got to fill your life with adventure. Yes, it's beautiful. Wait, by the way, will you, is is Pickle single? Because I have a cat named Bernadette who's looking for a spouse. No. Yeah. Um. Well. Uh, it, she does have a gentleman caller that oh. comes to the window. <laughs> okay. And we know when he's there. This beautiful cat called Monty <laughs> comes and looks in. And we know when he's there because she hisses and smashes the window. So I don't, I don't think she's in 
oh. to relationships. Uh, okay. I think she wants to be left alone. Left alone. Now. Yeah, she's a smart cat. Yeah. Uh, Ricky, All right, thank Ricky, you, Ricky. Thank you so much. Tell Jane Hay and Pickles goodbye, and you can get <laughs> oh, season three you. of Afterlife. It's on Netflix right now. What's your favorite part about Ricky? He's hilarious every time he comes on. He's funny as all get out, but he has a depth that's about 10 feet yes. deep. I mean, you don't see that coming. And I think like the, the thought that things that are sad can be funny, mm -hmm. that we can find the humor and grief. He's smart. He's smart. And pickles. And oh we my like God. pickles. Picklicious. I want to say that picklicious. He's I he's know. He's, mar he's missing out on Bernadette. Stay tuned, another big show tomorrow, and today we're catching up with the one, the only Hollywood legend, Goldie oh, Hawn. Lucky us. But Goldie's been really busy working on a special project. We can't wait to share it with you guys. So have a great Tuesday. See you tomorrow. Oh, it smells like pastry. What are you doing? <laughs> um, can we not put your face in the dough? I'm glad it's just us eating it. Hi everybody and welcome to Dylan Dishes, Cooking with Cal. I can't wait to take a look back at some of my favorite Cooking with Cal segments and offer just a few of those tips and tricks that didn't quite make it into the original episode. In today's episode, we are all about apples. Everyone in my family loves apples, and I use them in so many different recipes in so many different ways. Just ask Ollie. I love taking the boys apple picking. I don't know why, it ends up being one of the most stressful days. Um, you know, somebody has to go to the bathroom, somebody's hungry. Uh, there's no parking because the <laughs> apple orchards are so crowded outside of New York City, but I am determined to always take the boys apple picking. I just think it's fun. Once you kind of go along that row and there's nobody else around for a little while and you pick the best apples, you kind of sneak a bite here and there. And the best part is I make so many different things with apples that I love bringing a big bushel of apples home and just seeing what we can do with them. For anyone else who went apple picking recently, here are two easy ways to use up all those apples. First up, my crunchy apple salad. Cal has a list of the ingredients you'll need for this recipe. So let's go through the ingredients, okay? What's in our apple salad? Apple. And zucchini. <laughs> Try again, not zucchini. Salad? So close. Celery. Celery. <laughs> and what are these? I think you know. Cranberry. You've been snacking on those since we started. Do you know what this is? A nut. It's a walnut. Walnut. And then you know this one. Yogurt. Lots of vanilla yogurt. So this apple salad is a perfect after school snack. It's a good breakfast. It's just a good all around nice healthy alternative. How's the yogurt doing? Do you want a spoon? Gross. You want to help me with the apple? Let me, let me cut it up into a smaller piece for you. You are actually eating all of my ingredients. No, not that many. Chop it up nice and small. You're doing a lot more eating than cooking. What's your favorite fruit? Apple. <laughs> I'm growing it and it's really hard. While you do that, I'm going to chop up the celery. Okay. I like to make the celery really small. Why? so that it's not too hard to chew. Oh. So come when I was little, yeah. I used to eat this all the time, every single morning for breakfast. Was that a long time ago? It was a long time ago. Even when I first moved to New York, I used to eat it all the time, every morning for breakfast. Yeah, that's weird. Mix it up. Yeah, mix it all together. All right, what should we put in next? How about some of these? Yeah, sure. Sprinkle those all in there. I can pour it. Okay. Perfect. 
And now let's chop these up a little smaller. Just rock your knife back and forth. <laughs> Look at how small I made these. Whoa. So now we got all our ingredients in here, right? And here's the fun part. There you go. This is the medium one or the biggest one? What, bowl or a spoon? Spoon. That's the small one. I have to lick it off. <laughs> Did you have to lick it off? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, because there's yogurt on it. <laughs> so you can add as much yogurt as you want. It's not really a measurement here. It's more just once everything is all nice and combined. Sometimes I'll add blueberries in here. Oh, I have to look it up. Oh. I just eat it off. So that's it, super simple, right? I usually make a big bowl of this and then just scoop it out in the morning or you can divvy it up into little Tupperware containers and it's good to go as a grab and go snack. Are we done? That's it, that's all we have to do. Are you gonna taste one? I'm gonna taste one too. A taste test? It's a taste test. <laughs> <laughs> and what spoon should I use? Is it healthy? It's very healthy. Up next, we are taking apples from sweet to sweeter with one of my favorite fall treats, apple dumplings with a homemade caramel sauce. You don't want to miss this. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. We began our Cross America journey tonight. St. Louis, Austin, here in Nashville, from Washington, D.C., the site of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin. Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Make the most of your day with... Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Our week-long journey across America from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. <laughs> There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. All right, it just made two. Our week long journey across America from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? 
Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Our week-long journey across America from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital. You rarely see. It's your last movie. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it, I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at five on NBC News Now. Welcome back to Dylan Dishes, Cooking with Cal. Today's episode is all about using a favorite fall staple, apples. Next up, Cal and I are making apple dumplings with a homemade caramel sauce. This recipe takes a bit more time, a bit more patience, but I promise it's worth it. I first saw this recipe in Better Homes and Gardens' new cookbook. So here's how to make one of my favorite fall treats. There are a lot of steps, but it's still pretty easy, okay? There's only three things. We need the caramel sauce that goes on top, We've got the apples that we're going to fill with this little filling, and we're going to wrap it in pastry dough. So let's get started. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> this is a hot apple. There we go. That's a nice apple. You said the water? <laughs> you can't eat everything. Pour in the sugar. Mom? Yes. Yeah. And I'm just gonna do half this cinnamon, not all of it. So I'm gonna bring this up to a boil, and this is gonna be our caramel sauce. We still have some things to do. You ready to make the filling? All right, what do you think those are? Mm -hmm. Walnuts. Walnuts. And what are those? Raisins. Raisins. And we're gonna add honey. Got a tablespoon of honey. This is gonna be our filling for the apples. Dump the salt into the flour. All the salt? Yeah. Do you know what this is? Mm -mm. What do you think it is? I don't know. This is called a shortening. You wanna make the shortening look like little bits of peas in here. What happens if we eat it? It would taste disgusting. Ready? Like press it down and twist. There you go. Press and twist. Press it hard. All right, now we're gonna add the half and half. Now can I pour it? What are we making? Apple dumplings, remember? Oh, yummy? Yeah. Is it dessert? It is a dessert. When it's done, can I eat one of it? Of course. And you? Yes. It smells so good. Oh, it smells like pastry. What are you doing? <laughs> Um, can we not put your face in the dough? I'm glad it's just us eating it. All right, here we go with our dough. Oh no, we make the hole. No, no. don't make a hole! Why? Because no more holes, no holes. I need you to start here. Okay. And end all the way over here. Nice! Put the apple here. Can you take a little bit of this? This is our standard hiding, hiding spot. A little cinnamon sugar. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna pour the sauce over the dumplings. Carefully. Mm. Do you love it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you wanna make this apple dumpling recipe right away, you might be thinking I don't have an apple core like I used, um, but there is a way you can just cut right through the apple. It's, it's tedious, I'll tell you that. In fact, I held off making this recipe until I ordered one of these. <laughs> um, wherever you get you know, kitchen supplies, it's an easy order. Just wait a couple days until it gets there. But if you don't have patience, um, just be careful. And I wouldn't recommend doing this part with the kids because you need a very sharp knife 
and you literally just have to cut around the core of the apple. So make sure you go all the way to the bottom. This is probably the worst part of the whole recipe, is coring the apple. Just want to make sure we get to the other side. My kids eat a lot of apples, and whether I'm slicing them or dicing them or doing whatever it is with apples, there's just no good way to get the seeds out. But this, this works pretty well. Okay, so you can either do it that way if you don't have patience, although I think this way is the way to go. So this is what an apple core does. Basically the same thing the knife did, just in all one big swoop. Kind of get it in there. Twist it, pull it up. And there you go. That was easier, right? So I'd recommend just holding off a couple days on this recipe and wait till you get your apple core. I mean, because that's perfect. So to core the apple with a knife, you wanna make sure you use a paring knife. They're nice and sharp, they're tiny. If you use anything bigger, I feel like you're gonna cut the whole apple up. Um, and a steak knife would just never work for this. So get yourself a paring knife too. <laughs> for all these recipes, go to today.com slash Dylan Dishes. I'll do the chocolate chips. No, I want to. No. Fine. Yay. Let's, do the Let's pour it at the same time, Alexander. Three, Three two, one. one. Whee! My name's Alexander Charbonnet, and this is Kids in the Kitchen. My name is Alexander Charbonnet. I'm seven years old, and I'm in second grade. I started cooking when I was five for my mom and my dad and my sister. I started my cooking channel two years ago when I was five. Hi guys, hi friends, welcome to my show. Kids can cook with Chef Alexander. We are making banana muffins with no egg because I'm allergic to egg. My egg allergy um, makes me sad, but I'm more sad because I can eat stuff like other people. Because of my allergy, I can't eat cookies or donuts or like cakes or like a lot of stuff. My mom is awesome because she makes eggless stuff like cookies, cupcakes, and regular cakes. But my mom and I bring um, treats like cookies without egg to school with me so I can enjoy it with my friends. My little sister has a peanut allergy. She can have like peanut butter and jelly. So I feel like she's a special too. My mom was the one who taught me how to cook. Um, my favorite part of cooking is I get to spend special time with my mom cooking. My favorite hobbies are playing video games, um, riding my bike, riding my scooter. Um, I also really love dinosaurs. Here's some, a fact of some dinosaurs. Did you know that the Allosaurus does, doesn't have serrated teeth? And it actually uses jaw. He, he opens his mouth and he slashes his upper jaw into its prey like a hammer. We are making donut chocolate donut cakes. So we have this flour, so we're gonna dump it into the sieve. <laughs> I wanna be a pastry chef because I'm already a pastry chef. I am so excited because today we are making eggless trini macaroni pie and blender muffins with apples, bananas, and carrots. First we're gonna start with the macaroni pie. Here's everything we need to start with. We got butter, we got olive oil, cut up onions, onion powder, garlic powder, black pepper, flour, mustard, cheese, salt, but we also need elbow and pasta and milk. 
First, we're gonna make the cheese sauce. First, we're gonna melt the, the butter the, and the olive oil over medium heat. Now the next step, we need to add the onions. Make sure you cook it for a few minutes because we don't want the smell of the onions to make us cry. The next step, you need to add the flour and you need to make a roux. A roux is fat mixed with flour. You need to um, whisk it so it doesn't give that raw flour taste. That would taste horrible. This is what's gonna thicken the sauce since I'm not using egg. Now we need to add the milk to the pot, but make sure to add it slowly because we don't want it to spot all over the place. Now we need to whisk it until it's fully incorporated. Next, we're gonna add the mustard. Now we're ready to put in the spices. We got our onion powder, the garlic powder in, and the black pepper in. And the salt, let's put in the salt too. Bubbling, it looks like lava. This is what we're looking for. I wish you guys can smell this. Because that really smells good. Now for the best part, we put in the cheese. Now we're going back to mixing. The sauce looks like this. This is a little hot, so you know who I need? Mommy! Almost there, up. Oh. It's important to incorporate the pasta into the cheese sauce. We're gonna put in a grease baking dish and then we're gonna top it off with cheese. This looks great. Now we're just gonna add some cheese to on the top. I need to pop this in the oven, so I need to call mom again. Mom! Oh, it looks good. Okay, I'm gonna open the oven. Okay. Thanks, mom. Oh no, thank you. Good job. We're gonna let it bake for 25 or 30 minutes. This looks awesome. It wouldn't be complete without my favorite person. Mmm. Mm. Yeah. We come from a long line of foodies in our family, a long line of cooks, and you're just carrying on that tradition by continuing to be one of the chefs in our family. We began our Cross America journey tonight, St. Louis, Austin. Here in Nashville, from Washington, D.C., the site of our nation's capital, you rarely see. This is your last one. <laughs> <laughs> was talking smack part of this. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community?
for breaking news in our changing world. Download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Now we're gonna make one of my favorite recipes, the blender muffins without egg. They have apples, carrots, and bananas. But to help me, I'm gonna have my sister, Natalie. Come on. Bling. So we're gonna make, introduce yourself, Natalie. Okay, so my name is Natalie, and I'm going in kindergarten soon. And my, my favorite food is fruits and vegetables. Five, I'm five, and I'm Alexander's sister. My nickname and, is Peanut. And her nickname is Peanut, but she has a peanut allergy. But this also has um, no eggs, so it's Isn't that simple. funny, guys? Now we have this big mixing bowl, so now we're gonna put in all our dry ingredients. Let's start with the flour. Sugar. Now, now we put in baking powder and my now turn. Let's put in baking soda. Now let's put in some soda. cinnamon, like for cinnamon rolls. Let's mix. Let's make finger muffins. Mix, 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 mix up. <laughs> Agitate around. Okay. Okay. Your turn. Now we need the blender, and now we're going to ask Mom for the blender. Mom! Now we're going to add the, the apples, the carrots, and bananas to the blender. Let's start with the apples. Yeah! Hmm. Mom! Blop. It's time for carrot time. And guys, in case you know, these are for our bunnies, but we use them for baking now. Let's put the banana peel in. Break it in half and then put the other half in. That might be smart. Yeah. Filling a flower. <laughs> it looks it's weird. Blender. I'm trying to get the ones in the on the back. Maybe we should do it together. Let's mix and agitate, agitate, agitate. Let's mix and agitate. Let's do that. Mm -mm -mm. Now let's add. I'll add the butter. Vanilla and. Let's do it. Three, two, one. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I'll do the chocolate chips. No, I want to. No. Fine. Yay. Let's, do, let's pour it at the same time, Anza. Three, two, one. Whee! Wait, the oats. Ooh, this looks good. Now we have our muffin tin. Yep. We get to spray our muffin tin. Yeah, we need to do it three quarter way full. How about you scoop it and I put it in? Ready to go in the oven now. And now let's get mom. Now it's going to take 18 to 22 minutes. Bye, we'll see you on the next day. So 
some of them are small, and some of them are ginormous. Oh my gosh, they get my... They just want to gobble them all up in my mouth. These have been cooling for 10 minutes, so they're ready to eat. makes the yummy drink. Morning. The nation's airlines sound a new alarm ahead of tomorrow's 5G rollout, saying it could create a catastrophic disruption for flights across the nation. This is reckless, it's dangerous, and it's got to stop. This morning, fears that the new technology will ground 